tonight, a Husker Nation invader. But remember, Northwestern. Pick in the air. Oh, it's good. Damian Anderson leads the Wildcats assault. Eric Crouch heads Nebraska's punishing rushing attack. The best in the country. For the 32nd straight time, Nebraska heads to a bowl game where they will take on Northwestern next. Tonight, the lights of San Antonio's Riverwalk are the city's second best offering because inside the Alamo Dome, there's a certain feel only associated with a big game in college football. For the 32nd straight season, Nebraska's year will end in a bowl game. This time, they substitute pride in place of a title shot, but the mission statement remains the same. For Northwestern, tonight puts the finishing touches on another storybook season. This time around, the Cats want to pin an ending to their liking. Reese Davis and Rodney Gilmore, points of plenty, almost a certainty. Hey, this season's Wildcats feature a knockout punch offense with All-America credentials. The final test may be their toughest yet. Football at Nebraska has become expected excellence. Eric Crouch and the nation's number one ground game have an agenda. An acceptable season is still one win away. Inside the Alamo Dome for the eighth consecutive year, the Sylvania Alamo Bowl. And the matchup out of the Big 12 Conference's 32nd consecutive bowl appearance. It's 32nd consecutive nine-win season. Eighth-ranked Nebraska, eight and three, number 19 Northwestern out of the Big 10, the opposition tonight. And welcome to San Antonio. I'm Dave Barnett. We may have the most interesting of all the postseason matchups because of the contrast in backgrounds. Nebraska, as reliable a commodity as there has ever been in college football, and Northwestern hoping to win its second bowl victory ever, the last one 52 years ago, just their fourth bowl appearance ever. They're here because of maybe the most staggering recent one-season turnaround on the offensive side of the ball, and it's engineered by Randy Walker. In his first year, three wins. They were 103rd nationally in total yards this year. They're third. Last year, 110th in scoring. This year, ninth in the nation in scoring offense. Walker says his year two turnaround was anything but a miracle. I think it starts with attitude. And uh, to, to quote a famous figure, you know, we quit asking why and started asking why not. And we just tried to find a way. And, and we, we replaced an ethic that was kind of a complaining, whining, uh, you know, and, and say, hey, we replaced it with a work ethic. And if anybody personifies that turnaround, Zach Kustok, last year 46%, only three touchdowns, six interceptions this year. School record for total offense, a school record for touchdown passes. And with more on the Northwestern quarterback, let's send it below and welcome Michelle Tafoya. Well, Dave, the Northwestern coaching staff calls Zach Kustok one of the most underrated players in the country and a perfect fit for this offense. He has rewritten Northwestern's single-season record book, including the new record for touchdown passes in a season with 18. But perhaps the most remarkable thing about his season has been the ability to lead comebacks. At Wisconsin, Northwestern trailed by three with 51 seconds to play. They came back to win in double overtime. At Minnesota, Northwestern was down 21 in the second half. Kustok ran for two touchdowns and threw for two more, including the game winner to Sam Simmons. And versus Michigan, Northwestern trailed by five with 20 seconds to go when Kustok found Simmons in the end zone to win 54-51. Now, Kustok is very modest, but his coaches will tell you that the success of every other player on this offense is predicated on the performance of Zach Kustok, Dave. And we welcome Bill Curry and Mike Olick. And how comforting a thought for Randy Walker that if Zach Kustok happens to be off a little bit, he can hand it to the second leading rusher in the nation to Damian Anderson. He can hand it to him and he will. Abraham Lincoln said, chop your own wood. It'll warn you twice. Randy Walker believes that. And the running game is personified by hard blocking, which is old style, and by the play calling of the new spread offense, an unusual combination from which he has chopped this rare offense the effect on defenses is devastating as witnessed by the fact that all-american tailback damian anderson scored 22 touchdowns this year 
the average length of those touchdowns, 22.9 yards. Mike Golick, I think that means that a lot of big old defensive linemen like you are going to get knocked around some tonight. Well, if the Nebraska offense has any say about it, they'll be knocking some people around. The number one running team in the country, 349 yards a game. The running backs, Dan Alexander and Corell Buckhalter and Eric Crouch, all three went over 2,000 total yards this year. So, you think I talk about one of them, right? Wrong. I'm going to talk about the big uglies up front, the offensive line led by two All-Americans, guard Russ Hochstein and the best center in the land, Dominic Riola. The five of these guys, the smallest is 290, the biggest is 305, and they are mean. They will reach block you, they will cut block you, but they want to run you over. That is the bottom line. So if there's success tonight on the ground, the reason is going to be those five guys up front knocking you down, and when you finish it, they want you looking out your ear hole after that unblocking you. Fourth meeting ever between the Cornhuskers and the Wildcats. Their first since 1974. Nebraska wins the toss and defers and Chase Long has us underway as Lewis Ayede returns it from the two and Northwestern will open its first possession of the night at its 16-yard line. And Zach Kustak goes to work. Junior Orland Park, Illinois. Total offense record, touchdown pass record, nine rushing touchdown. That ties Otto Graham's ancient school record. And our Becks starting lineup with the nation's number two ground gainer, Anderson Cartaya, with him in the backfield. Thompson, Johnson, Farman will start, but they will throw it to a slew of speedy pass receivers. And with five of them on the pattern, first down, the first throw of the night is to Teddy Johnson. And the senior from Elgin, Illinois, a short game. The offensive line for Northwestern, Brockmeyer, Clellan, King, Rail, and Souza. The black shirt defensive line, Kelsey, Lohr, Kaiser, and Vandenbach. Keep an eye on Vandenbach, 17 tackles behind the line. He loves playing on the offensive side of the ball. Johnson, a loss of one out over the middle. And intended for Anderson, a diving interception attempt by Troy Watchorn to be third and 11. The linebackers for the Huskers are met by the All-America in the middle, Carlos Polk, Shanley, and Stella on either side. Carlos Polk, an imposing, intimidating force in the middle. He will need to play a key role in the running game. He'll have to get to Damian Anderson time and again tonight. Two Texans in the secondary coming home, Craver and Walker with Watch one and Gross. Third and 11 for Kusta. And he may change a play two or three times before he takes the snap. The swing pass intended for Anderson. A quick three and out turned in by the Blackshirt defense. Uh, certainly not what Northwestern wants on third down. They need that third, two, three, four area to work the offense the way it needs to be worked. Third and 11, you're just having that defense pin their ears back. That's exactly the position they want to be in. They were in Gustak's face right away. J.J. Standring, Jr. from Chicago. And their third leading putter in history will kick to Bobby Newcomb. One of the most dangerous return men in the country. Feels this one of the 41. Heads right. And is dragged down after a return of four by Pat Durr. But the Husker offense will go to work with good field position. And Eric Crouch, the junior from Omaha, second all-time for Nebraska in total offense. Their all-time leading rushing quarterback. And that takes in some talent. Willie Miller is the fullback. The I back Dan Alexander, Newcomb at a wing, Davison, the wideout, and Wistrom, the talented tight end. And while Northwestern has the number three total offense in the country, the Huskers roll out the number six offensive attack. And they start with a reverse, Alexander with the give to Newcomb. Knocked out of bounds by Harold Blackman at midfield. And strung out fairly well by the Wildcats as Nebraska goes for the surprise on first down. Always the trademark of a Nebraska offense, the huge offensive front. Volk, Fonoti, Riola, the All-America, Hochstein, and Schwab. Defensive front for the Wildcats. Dwayne, Missouri, a homecoming for him out of San Antonio. Chapman, Simon, and Emmerich. Dwayne Missouri loves coming home. He's the leader on the D-line. 
Newcomb gets five on the reverse. Crouch with a late pitch to Alexander on his first option of the night. Big yardage to the 30. 20 yards. He cracks helmets with Billy Silva, the middle linebacker. But option number one for Crouch goes for big yardage. This is exactly how you read the option. It doesn't just have, have to happen at the line. It can happen after. He's going to run it down. Look, he looked like he was tucking the ball away. Then he gets it out late. A great job of tucking it. Looked like he was going to run, making the defender commit to him. That leaves his pitch man wide open. Two snaps, 25 yards, and straight up the middle, burrowing for eight on first down. Goes Alexander. Silva, another tackle alongside Napoleon Harris. Northwestern linebackers, Harris, Silva, and Bentley. Considered one of the best groups in the country. Watch for Silva. He leads the team in tackle second in the Big Ten with 116. And the secondary, Blackman, Morton, Wheeler, and Covington. Northwestern's defense nowhere near as accomplished as its offense, but they stayed enough games to win eight of them. Willie Miller, the fullback, backs his way to the 15. First and 10 from there for number 15. Average five yards per carry during the season. Brought down by Rashad Morton. Didn't take Nebraska long, and it hardly ever does to show what they're all about. And boy, Bill, I, I know you're going to have fun talking about this if Nebraska's old line continues to be successful. You've seen the ex-old lineman. You've been loving this. Cross, Alexander, you turn right side, untouched, touchdown. 15 yards, and it's 6 to nothing, Nebraska. The Nebraska fullback, Willie Miller, in the tradition of Nebraska fullbacks, led the way. Big block on the outside backer. Well, you wonder if you got some wide eyes over there on the Northwestern, on the field and on the sideline. They just got him watered a little bit. Josh Brown will try to extend his consecutive PA streak to 100, and he does, and it's 7 0 Huskers. And Alexander's been there. And 15 yards. He's in the end zone again, and Nebraska powers its way to an early lead in the Sylvania Alamo Bowl. Another good crowd in the Alamo Dome, the eighth annual Sylvania Alamo Bowl in San Antonio. And five plays, 54 yards, three of them runs for a total of 41 yards in the final 15. Well, Dan Alexander, whose trademark is yardage after contact, yak yards. He gets no yak yards in that touchdown. Well, let me tell you what, and, and this is a man at 245 pounds, loves the contact. He'll steer toward a defender instead of trying to make a move on him. But there needs to be a defender there. <laughs> yeah, there was no defender, but he'll look him up. He's long. Has this one very low and over again and through the back of the end zone. So that first exchange would uh, pretty much equate the worst fears by Northwestern. They don't move it, and Nebraska goes right through. Uh, here's the O-line, Schwab and Finotti. Watch them both. You're going to see a down block and a pull. One. Finotti coming up for the linebacker, two, and hello end zone. And fullback Willie Miller doing his best fullback boom right there on Harris, number eight. Napoleon Harris needs to fill that hole instead of being knocked back by the fullback. Now the cat and mouse game by Kustak, who surveys the Nebraska look. They back away from the blitz look. And he will keep across the 40. And chased down finally at the 48-yard line by Keo Craver, a gain of 28. Zach Kustak is all man. Yes, he is a quarterback, and yes, he's smart, but he is tough as nails, and he will turn it up against anybody. Nobody will intimidate Northwestern's offense, and they're going to have to answer Nebraska again and again tonight, but they're off to a good start on this drive. Look at Teddy Johnson, the wide receiver, downfield blocking. They Great block, job out of him. They block hard all the time. It's Randy Walker football. Not just Damian Anderson is a running threat back there. Kustak, their second leading rusher, 450 yards, nine touchdowns on the ground for him this year. 
didn't move it at all. Their first possession. Quickly in business. The second time they have it. There's contact. Sam Simmons looking in vain for a flag on Joe Walker. They'll rule it uncatchable. The reason they didn't make the call is because they'll rule it that the ball was thrown such that Simmons could not get there. Otherwise, it would certainly have been interference. Northwestern all over the books. Eighth nationally rushing, third nationally total offense, ninth nationally in scoring. Already proven you can get 50 on them and they can still win. Michigan may never forget that game. They really, seven to nothing lead. Undaunted here, they come back to stop on the left side on Tuxton till he's in the 25 yard line, a gain of 30. This is a read by Kustak, as if it were a triple option. He reads the backside man to his left. He sees him take the outside, and he darts right up underneath, and there's nobody home. Mason's second leading rusher hasn't touched it yet. They line up in the eye. Two carries, 58 yards for Kustak, the quarterback, and now Anderson through the middle, behind center, inside the 20. Watch him look at the defensive man as he puts the ball in the back stomach. It's hard to see his eyes, but he actually reads that. If that man comes down the line, he will hand the ball. If he widens, he'll keep it and run. Anderson with a marker down is close to the first down, knocked out at the 16, a couple yards shy. From where that's thrown, it would appear that it's a holding call against a receiver. And you'll see that a few times in the game. But that's a price Northwestern is willing to pay. Their receivers get up in the numbers and they smash. Nope. Wrong. Illegal participation. Yeah, Nebraska trying to play with too Nebraska. many players, huh? Well, when you're getting, <laughs> when you're getting gassed, you put 12 out there, well, right? Well, what they're, what they're doing is, is they're freezing the linebackers, especially Carlos Polk right now in the middle with the misdirection plays. He's freezing there, and he's reacting a little bit late to what he sees, and the speed is, get, is getting him. They're beating him on speed then. This guy will come up and hit you in the mouth, but right now he's got to recognize it a little quicker. Mountain West officiating crew led by Gerald V. Wright. Legal participation, defense, up the distance to the goal, first down. And that's what you don't want to do with Northwestern's offense. Give them yardage. They're going to make enough without you giving them anything. And you're talking about defenses being back on their heels. It's going first both ways. Ed Markoff makes it first and goal from the Husker nine. So Kustak has his look. And the Huskers change that look. As he drops back in the shotgun and can't handle the snap, has to fall on it for a huge loss back at the 18. It's real is interesting watching this Northwestern offense, and we'll get some great shots of it. The receivers and quarterback look over to the sideline, and they get the play signaled into them from the coach. Then you'll see Kustak go up to the line of scrimmage, and he'll tell the offensive line and the running back what the play is. It's all coming from the sideline, and then he may change the play a couple of times at the line. Nine-yard loss and still goal to go on second down. And two stop hit as he delivers incomplete intended for Roger Jordan. Kyle Vandenbosch, the senior from Larchwood, Iowa, providing the hurry-up for Kustak. And that's the second time he's done it tonight. He's put a hit on Kustak from the waist on down. He's letting him know he's there. He's beating Leon Brockemeyer. It's up at the top of the screen. Simple rip move. It's what he used in the first drive as well. It's just speed to the corner. Brockmeyer, the old lineman, has got to take a better angle out there. Seven fall time. Tackles for loss. The leader in sets. And tackles behind the line of issue. So third and goal. With five wide pressure right up the middle. And a sack by Jason Lohr, the nose tackle. Number 70, Jason Lohr. Three gifts from Lohr Northwestern. For the Nebraska defense, a fumble snap and a blown protection. Lohr was not blocked at all, so a little bit rattled on both sides of the ball for the Northwestern team. 
you are tired. Let me tell you what. D. Lyman loved those plays. Now you make sure you make the tackle. I had a lot of those, Bill, and I'd miss it. They call it the Frankenstein look. I get a free rush, and I'd miss. Lore didn't miss. Boy, instead of first and goal tonight, here's Tim Long to try a 44-yarder. His career best is 46. And in the perfect conditions indoors, he drives it straight through and into the net with plenty to spare. So Randy Walker gets at least three out of their second possession, seven to three, Nebraska. Enjoying it inside the Alamo Dome, seven to three, Nebraska. Power through a 54-yard five-play scoring drive on their first possession, and Northwestern responds with some of the uh, exotic looks they can throw at you, especially on the ground, and the kick is hung very high and returned out to the 38-yard line. So Nebraska, again, getting excellent field goal position. T.J. Hollowell returns it for the Huskers. Well, that was a big drive for Northwestern after the first one. They got down and got some points out of it. Now this defense <laughs> picked themselves up, dust themselves off, and Try and take this North, uh, this Nebraska offense on again. They got knocked around that first drive. They did, and this is too good a field position. That was not good coverage on the kick, and it wasn't a good kick. Understand either one. Well, from the 38, out of the gun, rolling through the middle, and again, 10, 12 yards before any contact. A gain of 13 for Alexander, and finally. Brought down by Napoleon Harris. Let's send it down below to Michelle Tafford. Well, Dave, while Northwestern's defense was on the sideline after that first Nebraska drive, they were reeling a bit from that drive, just feeling as though they couldn't do anything. The first comment uttered was, what happened to us out there? Defensive coordinator Jerry Brown tried to get the troops together, keep them calm, and say, let's keep it simple. Outside linebacker Kevin Bentley got straight to the point and said, let's fix it right now. Well, that's a little improvement, and it's still a gain of six for Alexander, and another tackle by somebody in the secondary. That's not a good trend either. The strong safety, Rashidi Wheeler, hits it. And I understand, this is this is an offense. There's a Nebraska player down. It is Wheeler. This is an offense that averages 6.3 yards per rush, number one in the nation. Of their 63 touchdowns, 45 have come on the ground. They love to go straight ahead. As I said in the open, that offensive line just loves to play smash mouth football. These offensive linemen, you, you're right. I love to talk about old linemen. These guys average seven we plus pancakes player, per game. Now, pancakes is where you take a guy and you drive him over on his back as if you had turned him into the proverbial breakfast food. And they are already beginning to pancake the guys with the black shirts. And it teaches you to get your pads down on defense, <laughs> doesn't it, big man? Alexander. <laughs> Staggers, really, literally. He tried to get up to his feet, fell back down, helped off. And second down comes from the 43, and Couch is hit for a loss of one. Best reaction yet, Pete Chap on the defensive tackle. Now there's a Nebraska player down. Crouch on the option to keep. And way down the field is uh, wide receiver John Gibson. All the way up at the 22. This Nebraska team, of course, the preseason number one. They were number one until the loss to Oklahoma. And according to Eric Crouch, there is a little unfinished business for the Huskers, Huskers uh, despite the disappointments of this season. John Gibson. There's a lot left to prove to ourselves. And, uh, you know, the perfect game is still out there. And I don't, I don't think we've played that perfect game this year and, and put everything together in, in all three, uh, you know, phases of the game. And I, I think it's another opportunity for us, for us to go out and prove ourselves to the country that we're one of the best teams out there. They still believe it. But on the other hand, it is Nebraska, and nine wins is the minimum expectation. Well, they believe that coming into this year, they, they took care of Tennessee in the Fiesta Bowl last year. And even though Florida State won the, the BCS title game, a lot of people thought Nebraska was the best team in the country coming into this year. So they are certainly disappointed they're not playing for the national title. And instead, to stay in the top ten, quarterback draw, Crouch, too crowded up the middle, will pick up only a couple. And a little exchange after Crouch goes down. Chapman is there again, along with Javier Collins, the two defensive tackles converge for the Cats. 
That's two of the best plays for the front seven of Northwestern that got knocked around on that first drive. Now they're attacking a little more. They have to attack. They have to try and play on the other side of the line. It's very difficult to, to, to do against this offense, but a good two plays there. Well, you know very well, Mike, what it goes when you haven't played in a long time is you get your pads up. They got them down that time. Best punter in school history. Against the best punt return man in the Big Ten, Aiden Feld. Almost one over Sam Simmons. Diving attempt to keep that one inbounds just off, and a nice effort by Randy Stella. Capital one board, eight Eastern tomorrow. Here's Tuck. Batted down in his face by Vandenbosch. Vandenbosch is taking this football game over the same way he does those finance classes where he has a 3.85. He's already graduated in three and a half years. But it looks like he loves to play some ball, too, Michael. He's spending more time in the, in the Northwestern huddle or semi-huddle or at the line than Northwestern that is. is right now, whatever they're doing out there. He ain't at the library, is he? No, he's not. For an $18,000 post-grad scholarship ready for him the College Football Foundation. They have to wait a while. He may be playing for a while. Two stop. On the keeper this time picks up five and is run down by the free safety Dion Booker. Well, Damian Anderson hasn't really got involved in this game yet, but Kustak no doubt is he is the linchpin to this offense. No matter, I know that the, the lot of yards that Anderson has, but it is Kustak running the show. But you really got to get Anderson involved at some point, either by receiving or running. And carry three yards. That's it so far as the game. He winds up in the backfield. It's Kustak again. Down under the pressure, John Clanton has the second sack for Nebraska. What Clanton's doing is simply taking his man, Austin King, and picking him up and running him right back to the QB. Running slap over the fine young center who normally is not handled like that, just too strong. J.J. Standring. Does well to get that one off. Heavy rush by the Huskers. Newcomb returns it to the 49. Sandring does well to get off at 37 yarder. Again, Nebraska will take over in great shape and leading 7 to 3 in San Antonio. In its holiday splendor and completely populated by red clad Husker fans and purple clad. Northwestern fans each turn out by both contingents. So their allotments here in San Antonio. A 73 lead for Nebraska with 613 to go in the first quarter. Every time they've had it, they take over a terrific field position from the 49 here to backfield. Judd Davies, the fullback in front of Terrell Buckhalter. First pass for Eric Crouch. He goes deep down the middle. Incomplete. Intended for Troy Hasselbrook. Pass for Eric Crouch during the year hit less than 50 percent of his passes in the wins 52 and a half percent but way below par in the two losses the, the bottom line is here when it's in, within the framework of the offense with a, a good running attack he can pass well when they force the pass he doesn't do as well Shorter toss this time, and the out is caught out of bounds by Matt Davison, their senior, and for the third straight year, they're leading receiver. Down below in the shelter for it. Danger injury of this game. John Gibson hobbled off the field in a lot of pain. You saw him go down. The training staff tells me they are pretty sure he has a torn ACL. He is done for the day. He was crying in disappointment when he found the news. In a lot of pain, but more emotional than anything, Dave. Because he's a senior. This is it for John Gibson. That is a shame. Nebraska High School play in the third and ten. Two tight ends. Crouch feels the blitz and a one-handed grab. Going to be very close to the first down for John Bowling. Well, they put it back down where his knee hit. He's going to be about a yard short. I'll tell you, big Dominic Raiola shows why he's an All-American center. This is tough. If you're a big guy, he's got to come out this way after snapping the ball and protect his quarterback. Watch this. Now, that's a defensive back. Boom. What a great job. That's a pass block. Why not go for it? 
on fourth and one down here, and they do, and easily reaching the 40 is Buckhalter, and Nebraska earns another set of downs. Well, Nebraska came out in this series without a doubt. It was scripted to throw. They threw the two straight, and then it was third and ten, so they were pretty much going to throw on that. See now if they stay in that or if they go back to mixing it up a little more. What I saw in this, Mike, and I, when you coach, you really watch your quarterbacks in warm-ups. Crouch was sharp in warm-ups. He is not sharp now. It's adrenaline. When he gets calmed down, he'll probably do better. Out of the eye, Crouch. Never had a chance to get a pitch off that time. And Dwayne, Missouri, consensus first team, all Big Ten, celebrating a big tackle at home at a Roosevelt High School here in San Antonio. The biggest enemy of the option is penetration. You cannot run the option and let this kind of guy in your backfield. Boom, he whoops his blocker. He's in the backfield. Quarterback's on the ground. You got nothing. He never got to his pitch man because Wayne Missouri was too strong, too active. Nice play. Loss of four. Shot down second and 14. Much better protection this time over the middle. Davison reaches up to make the grab just inside the four. It will be third and nine. Rashad Morton made the tackle. Nebraska offensively led the nation in rushing for the 14th time for the sixth time in the last nine years. Passing, though, the worst in 19 years. 111th in the, the country. They're still ranked sixth total offense, fourth scoring offense. And as I said earlier, against Oklahoma in that loss, they were forced to just throw the ball, and Crouch really, really didn't perform well in that kind of a circumstance. Third and nine, batted down, intercepted. Billy Silva, the diving pick for the Wildcats. Northwestern thrives on hanging around, is what their coaching staff calls, hanging in there. Silva's been getting knocked around while this big Cornhusker offensive line go up and down the field, and he's hanging in the middle of the field, reading the quarterback's eyes. The ball's tipped, nice athletic move, by a big tough guy from San Diego and the first turnover of the game goes the Wildcats way and they're going to need those hanging in the game. They believe they're in better shape in the fourth quarter. Napoleon Harris the linebacker got a hand on that pass by Crouch fellow backer Silva with the <laughs> interception and flags all kinds of movement all kinds of discussion. Ben <laughs> Bosch needs one of those flags so he can throw it because he is so convinced that the guy across from him flinched just a little. Party snap, offside, <laughs> defense, five yard penalty, remains first down. Now let's see what happened. All he did was get down in a yep. three point yep. stance. That's legal. It is a judgment on the part of the official. Is the guy doing it in an attempt to deceive or is he not? That was a pretty gentle get down in a three point stance. He stuck, shovel pass, Anderson, quick reaction, Deion Booker. Oh, man, I'm telling you, number 14, Deion Booker, the free safety, is keeping his defense in the game, and that he must do. He's made nice plays on Kustak, this time on Damian Anderson, and Anderson is a load in the open field. Booker's having a big night. Those safeties must function to control the ground game of Northwestern. Booker started seven of the first eight games, replaced by Troy Washer and the senior. Simmons. Open field move on DeJuan Gross, and he reaches Husker territory at the 48. The dangerous Sam Simmons for 13 yards. Well, again, keeping that defense, guessing, mismatching, trying to get a little Simmons bit of open field. They want it because they, they feel they have the speed. They want to get the corner and try and beat them that way. They're not going to run over any of these guys. So they get the corner and get the linebacker stationary and late reacting. And there was no contain back there, Mike. Now, Kustak will change this play two or three. He's looking back at the sideline now for the possibility of yet another change. No room. Damian Anderson, the latest victim of Kyle Vandenbosch, who's oh. played in the first quarter of his life so far. That he is amazing. And, you know, this is his last game. And he knows he's a senior. This is his last game, and he is just going all out. Watch him come down the line. Now, this is Kustak's read when they had that read situation. 
Well, we're not going to get a chance to run That's it because of that offense. No question, back up there. <laughs> Snaps off if they can. One about every 18 seconds. Two stops. Delayed pitch. Anderson breaking one tackle and out of bounds at the 45. He ran through Mark Vedrill. Anderson now on the, on the play previous, pitch. Vandenbosch came flat down the line of scrimmage and caught the play from behind. Kustak, here's Vandenbosch. He's going to come right down the line of scrimmage and make this tackle. In the future, Kustak will watch him, and when he takes that angle, Kustak will keep the ball and run the area where he just vacated. It's an amazing new concept. Let's just up back off. Third and eight. Little back draw. Kustak for the first down. Knew exactly how far he had to get, and he slides with a couple of feet to spare. Now, Mike, let me make a, a, a prediction in reverse. Right. I bet you hated to play against a guy like this time. You know, I, didn't like, I never liked to play against this type of an offense because as a defense, they're looking to the sideline looking for the defensive call. They're not used to that. It's not a normal defensive huddle. Fake to Anderson. Throw incomplete. And he had David Farman open to the tight end. And Northwestern is this uh, five wide Farman. look Champion that they go to. Got to get Brown. something through the air. After all, it was uh, Walker studying last offseason the St. Louis Rams to get a lot of his passing ideas. Clemson to get a lot of his running ideas. Kind of an amalgamation of those two systems. Everything so far has been on the ground. At this time, there's nothing on the ground. What Nebraska is saying by scheme in this game, meaning gap control, you're not going to get the ball to Anderson. You're not going to kill us with that guy that ran for 1,914 yards and 22 touchdowns. We're going to make you run it, number 10. We're going to make Kustak win the game with his legs. Greg Bowl replaced the legendary 18-year defensive coordinator, Charlie McBride, this year. Third and 11, they're coming. Swing pass over the middle. And unable to fight his way through any traffic, Simmons, Joe Walker made sure of that. Now, this is a defense in Nebraska that statistically they weren't up there where they're used to being, and they kind of took that to heart. They wanted to prove a little bit tonight that, hey, they, they do think they're one of the best defenses in the country. One thing they do very well, Bill, is they pursue to the ball. That was the, that, that slant screen over the middle and the D lineman rushing and get back very quickly. Year after year, if you study the top teams in America, Nebraska will be the best at running to the football. Number 25, Joe Walker, the deep return man. And ring fakes, throws deep, interference, the easiest call possible. Keeper Craver, mercy. Could he have popped Jason Wright more obviously? Well, I tell you why. He thought it was going to be a punt. He, he thought it was. He thought the guy was just coming down the field to cover the punt, and he was just blocking him. That's exactly what Craver thought down at the bottom of the screen. He thinks he's covering the punt. He thinks he's blocking right now. He has no idea what's going on. And that's the whole theory. <laughs> Kenny Hatfield taught me this play about 15 years ago. The guy that's covering your outside man doesn't know that the ball's been thrown. Very good, Mike. Very good and and true. So you get the penalty, and, and Craver's lucky that this is not the NFL rule where the ball will be put down there about the seven-yard line. Third sure, Nebraska penalty. He thinks he's making yeah. a great play. Walker's yeah. celebrating, jumping up and down. He's thinking he got a great block. The <laughs> worst thing you get out of this deal is an interference call. What a brilliant time to make a call by Randy Walker and his staff. Back in business at the 21. Nebraska to draw flags. Kustak through the middle. Booker is there again, and he foils what appeared to be a big gainer for Zach Kustak. Nebraska is a team that simply will not beat itself with penalties. Tied with Bamba, the fewest in the Big 12, and a trademark for Frank Solich and Tom Osborne's teams before him, but only three or 30 tonight. Only three. Maybe the final play of the first quarter. Slam in and the grab inside the 10. Toon Lay Patrick, the redshirt freshman from Brooklyn, feeding Irwin Sweeney. As they quickly get the chains moved inside the 10 yard line, where it's first and goal, we're stuck at seven seconds, and they get one more snap off. I think I'll let this one go. 
No reason to hurry. Kustak's fourth completion of the night has Northwestern at the end of the quarter, trailing 7-3, but in position to take their first lead in the Sylvania Alamo Bowl in San Antonio. Starts with a precarious 7-3 Nebraska lead. The Wildcats have him backed up first and goal at the Husker 9. Damian Anderson in the first quarter. Not really a factor. Cleared it four times, only four yards. One catch, one yard for the nation's second leading rusher. Changing the play again. About four, three. And the pitch, Anderson, and then strung out for a loss. Keo Craver, who's peddling, is responsible for the Wildcats still having this possession, tries to make up for it. Northwestern on the year in the red zone's done a good job. They've scored 43 out of the 48 times they've been down here. 35 of them touchdowns. That's almost 73% touchdowns, and that's tough for these spread offenses. Take to Anderson in a roll. Two stop. Looking for Damian. Corner of the end zone. And a horrific pass. I mean, not within five yards of Anderson. Well, he threw it away. Well, he actually he had Teddy. Him. The way he was rolling, he actually had Teddy Johnson open for a minute. Just didn't go to him. Well, in that pattern, aren't you trying to get a jump ball situation let Anderson at least have a play at it? I, I think as accurate as, as uh, Kustak has been this year, I think, I hope he wasn't trying to complete that one. Third and goal at the tenth. Pump fake now in business for real. Corner of the end zone. This is a touchdown for Teddy Johnson. Now, David, let me tell you something. He, he was, was trying, trying to, to complete, complete that one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys rehearse that? <laughs> Teddy Johnson with his team high seventh touchdown catch of the year. First lead of the night for the Wildcats. Uh, you had Keo Craver and Deion Booker both looking at themselves after that one. Like, who had it? Johnson battled injuries his first three years. Got in shape this year, reduced his 40 yard dash time by better than point one. Now number four six. The extra point. Five, Tim Long makes it 10 7. Well, this worked because of the pump of the pump fake and what it does in the defense. Watch that. He pump fake and he frees it all oh, right there. Keel Craver steps up for the pump fake, and right now he's turning around yelling, help, 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 and there's no help there. Kustak has a mastery of this technique. Watch, that's a very convincing fake. It doesn't look so from this angle, but if you're that DB, you jump on it because you don't want the guy to catch the ball inside the five, and you end up with him in the back of the end zone. A very difficult touch pass to the back corner. He was going to get some late help from Deion Booker was Craver, but the pump fake, pump fake happened so well that Johnson was open so quick. But see, that's the price you pay for having Booker up in there playing the run. Right. He's really an extra middle linebacker, and they're playing like a seven diamond, and he couldn't get out there to help him. Oh, like a what? Seven diamond. Is that a card game? That was a that was a College Park High School defense where I was the middle linebacker. 1955. <laughs> One at later as time allows. All right, you just need to hang it. 14-16. Second quarter. The average start line right there, represented by that Joe red stripe. Has been a dream. The 44-yard line is where the average possession has started for Nebraska. Continue to track that tonight. It's been a big advantage for Nebraska until now. They trail 10 to 7. Randy Stella deep with Joe Walker, who returns it from the 17. And a huge return it is to the 49. Even better. Then they've been started. A return of 34 yards. Ah, they got to like those guys down the truck down there, put that red line on the 44. They got right by it. Ah, that worked. I don't like it when a plan comes together. Is a corn head like a cone head? Sort of. You're asking me? Why do you think I would know? Don't answer. <laughs> Never mind. Forget I no, asked it. There's a difference in a meat head. The face paint is effective 
but it doesn't make him into a meathead. We haven't gotten to you yet, Mike. Long, the kicker, limped off. Maybe something to watch. Got to get in on the hit. Crouch option right. Will keep. Turn it up. And get gone. Touchdown, Eric Crouch. 50 yards right back in front of Nebraska. You're seeing some of the differences where Northwestern tries to run that option tight. They don't get all the blocks, and there's a lot of Nebraska players there. Nebraska, they get on their blocks. And there's a lot of open holes when Crouch decides to keep it or pitch it. They're usually only dealing with one man between the quarterback and the pitch man. In that instance, offense is usually going to win. Fourth National League touchdowns on the ground for Crouch. He led all quarterbacks in scoring touchdowns. The extra point good by Brown. It took one play for Crouch to get the Cornhuskers the lead back. shift. <laughs> Eric Crouch took a matter of seconds to get Nebraska back on top after they trailed ever so briefly. Now Northwestern waiting for this kick and their average start for their early possessions has been their own 22. Just right at half. Where Nebraska's taken over their own 44. All start from the 20 as Zayani takes the touchback. Well, again, you've got to have people available to take the quarterback and the pitch man. There's two guys there, Silva and Wheeler, that one of the two have to get on the pitch man. But look, look at Wistrom come out, 87. I'll take, I got your back. I'll take takes on the block right there, just driving him, driving him, staying on the block. Silva gets his legs cut off from under him, and Wistrom just drives Wheeler out of the picture. So Kustak and the Wildcats offense. To respond. Take the give, open, but having to dive to make that catch, Sam Simmons had no chance to get in the yardage after the reception. A couple of things really important here. First of all, Nebraska has demonstrated whether or not they were interested in playing this game, don't you think, Mike? Oh, yeah, I think they answered that question. Second drive. Yeah, and second thing, this Northwestern team has been in this kind of situation over and over at Wisconsin, at Michigan, and they have learned to answer, and that's what they have to do again and again. I'm going to say Simmons bobbled that, and he was incomplete, so second and ten. So many calls and never come up against the play clock. First time Damian Anderson shows up tonight. He's good for a gain of 15. Dion Booker chased him down. And a marker down. And Damian Anderson, whose contributions had been limited to four yards on his first four carries and sees that this is coming back. Yeah, I think Keo Craver, number three, got held. Legal block in the back. Offense, 10 yard penalty. The spot of the foul. Repeat, second down. Downstairs to Michelle. Well, Dave, another injury. Northwestern place kicker Tim Long. He's injured his left knee. That is his kicking leg. He's been waiting to see how it feels. They have had him kick and run around. They're going to wait and determine exactly what it is and if he can keep going. Fifth most accurate kicker in school history. Nightmare scenario in the kicker has to make a tackle. Mark Vedrill making this tackle on Damian Anderson, so right back into the frustration mode. In the losses for Northwestern this year, Damian Anderson in two of the three uh, was held in check. TCU held him to 90 yards, 18 carries. Ladanian Tomlinson, the only man to outrush him at 243. Purdue, 17 carries, 55 yards for Anderson. He did manage 128 in the late loss to Iowa. No factor here yet. Deep ball, harmlessly incomplete. Way over Derek Thompson. Kyle Vandenbosch is absolutely hitting the quarterback or the running back or somebody on every single play. 
He is absolutely playing out of his mind tonight. Again, on Brock Meyer, this time just straight over him and then goes underneath him. Leon Brock Brockmeyer has got to be more stout in there and start jamming him a little better. Pretty good kick, very high by Standrum. Walker with a flag down, looked unsuccessfully for a corner to turn at midfield, the 35-yard kick. Just a five-yard return and another penalty. Yeah, it's going to be a block in the back on the return, and the ref might have set a record for throwing the marker. I think it went about 25 yards. <laughs> didn't put as many BBs in his. He's getting good hang time on it. You want to make sure he didn't throw it in somebody's face. No, 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 absolutely. There is no foul on the play. Oh. First foul. Just wanted to throw it. All for not. 14-10 Nebraska. Early in the second. In that case, just blocks from here. Can you imagine taking off those decorations and packing them away? I was about a thousand of my best friends only then. <laughs> it's a rather sizable job from the uh, they have to face when they go up to right after the new year and they go down. Back to work through the middle. Van Alexander the eye back inside the 20. Wheeler chases him down again of 33. Jason Schwab, number 65. Russ Hochstein, number 55. Dominic Raiola, number 54. Absolutely mauling people off the ball. Watch the movement in this direction. This is how you make the big holes. And then the big man runs right by the safeties. He's so fast. Look at that. He's, I love how he dips his shoulder at the end. He wasn't going out of bounds. He looks him up. Number 15, Alexander again. There's some yardage after contact. Half his production out of 1154 yards during the regular season after he took a hit and he powers 14 yards wow it's very difficult to tackle with people drilling you right now this this one is the fullback 15 miller watch him lead through bam on silva taking him out of the play alexander doesn't get touched till he's six yards down the field and that's 245 moving forward and he managed to hammer every member of the secondary when he got there <laughs> first and goal of the two why not one more Three carries, Dan Alexander finds the end zone. And it's the same story up front. Wow. Mike, you're talking about the work of the offensive lineman. It's just beautiful if you're a Nebraska person or if you're Dan Alexander. When we spoke with him, he's such an engaging young man. He said, Dan, do you realize that you're so much faster than you look? He said, you know, I really worry. I think I look slow. <laughs> I said, Dan, you're not slow. Scores already. Josh Brown. Got to get that streak up to 102. Second of PATs. 21 to 10. Alexander jumped over him that time. He didn't run through anybody. It's about a three inch vertical leap right here by the big guy. The O line just coming off the ball, taking it back. Alexander says, Whoop, all right, I'll take it over the top. Nobody to hit. Well, there are pancakes. There are pancakes happening all across the front. Watch the guys in oh. black going on the ground, being driven down by those same offensive linemen we just highlighted the play before. Jason Schwab, the right tackle, he, he blocked down and nailed two. Took him out. So well, we have the one play, 50-yard Eric Crouch scoring drive, and we have the three-play Dan Alexander scoring drive. But this is a team averaging 349 yards on the ground. And they're about halfway there, 171 look at, look at. rushing yards. The question everybody had about Nebraska, would they suffer the letdown, not even having made the Big 12 championship game, much less the Orange Bowl, the goal at the start of the season, or the preseason number one. Well, if this is a letdown, I would really hate to play against them when they were fired up. <laughs> See Dominic Raiola on the sideline? He's losing his mind out on the sideline. Yeah. Guy's mad at somebody. <laughs> he, he's not a gentle Hawaii. Wow. Sort of a letdown. What you got is frustrations being let out. Chase Long. As his kick returned by Ayeti out to the 25. 27 yards on the So now Northwestern, which for about a second and a half led this game at 10 to 7 back on their heels they've got to get some type of uh, 
offensive production reestablished. Well, for two reasons. One, obviously, they need to get and, and score some points. But for two, this Northwestern defense is getting knocked around right now, and they need some time on the bench. So this Northwestern offense has got to put some kind of a drive together. One of the big disadvantages of a fast-paced offense is the defense doesn't get to rest if the offense isn't productive. And a special teams limp off to Ianni, who just returned it. Gustav slam in, almost intercepted, and if Carlos Cole gets it, he runs 25 yards on top. Down below to Michelle. Well, you guys talking about Northwestern's offense. They came off the field after their last possession pretty dejected. Leon Brockmeyer very upset with him. Self. Damien Anderson kind of upset with the line, too. He said to 319-pound left guard Lance Quillen, you're the biggest one out there. Just do it. Zach Kusak as well, getting in the faces of the linemen. Easier said than done. Just do it. Kusak's oh. pass again batted down. Craver this time leaping in front of Teddy Johnson. Wow, what a play by Graver. And again, Kustak getting pressure in his face. And this has been happening all night long. This earlier in the game, Vandenbosch, you mentioned his name a ton tonight. Lore with the sack. Vandenbosch again getting in his face. Kustak is not able to set and throw. He's always on his back. A rather big third and ten. 11 and a half minutes still to go in the second quarter. Given the trend of the contest at the moment, pump fake, Kustak loops this one for a completion and a first down. Anderson Kustak's pass to the 32, and I beg your pardon, they're going to mark him out uh, well short. 32-yard line, not enough for Anderson. Boy, Bill, you, the see, drive going. you see what he had time. Boy, what a nice throw. Better job by Brockmeyer. He's keeping his pad square, Mike. If that tackle turns his shoulders, he'll get beat inside or outside every time. He kept his pad square to the line of scrimmage. Didn't want it. Another three and out for the Cats. Standring for Walker. Finds the corner on the left side up to the 43. Again, Nebraska has a short field. New Year's Day on ABC Sports, the granddaddy of them all. The Rose Bowl at 430 Eastern, 130 Pacific in Pasadena. And the matchup this year, Drew Brees goes out with his number 14th rank for New Boilermakers and his number four, Washington. Brees over 3,300 passing yards, rushed for over 500, and won the Davy O'Brien Award as the nation's top quarterback. And the Huskies have a fine one of their own. And Marcus Tsoulos to Sopo, number two, number two, number two Miami, New Year's Day. Wildcat defense, a stout statement. Buck Halter hit at the line of scrimmage. Football is a game of ball security, field position, and hitting. And the field position is overwhelmingly in the favor of Nebraska. Northwestern's actually lucky that the score isn't more than this, Mike. Oh, I, I absolutely agree, and this is a huge, huge test here to the Northwestern defense with their team down by 11. Nebraska when they're up 11 when they like to pass. They don't necessarily have to. Crouch. Look down. Was that a face mask? <laughs> like it might have been, but we in Missouri, but there's no marker. Well, I think he got it by, by like the shoulder pad collar. He did. What an impressive play again. Missouri, 14 tackles behind the line. This is a second one tonight. This is how you beat the option. Up the field. Whoa. Wow. If he had a wingspan of about 70 some inches, it's about two inches more now. That's how it's stretched out on that one. Missouri, as a senior, a holdover from the first rise of the Cats. 96, his freshman year, the last COVID 10 championship. Time out, 9.57 to go in the half. <laughs> 10 to 7 down. 21-10 up, 9.57 to go in the first half. That, by the way, on further review, was definitely face masking on Missouri. Didn't get called. And the top ground offense in the country is ground out 168 so wow. far. 17 rushes, only five passes. Why go against it when it's running the way it is? But a passing down here on third and 13. Play action for Crouch. And behind Matt Davison. That looked pretty well by Harold Blackman. Yeah, but, but again, when Nebraska is in a pure passing situation, that is not the strength 
of this offense. Croucha, a, a, a heck of a quarterback on the run. He actually, I think, throws better on the run than in the pocket. If you'd have seen him warm up, you'd have thought this guy's a polished drop back passer, but he does not throw the same way in the game as he does in warm ups. How many third and 13s do you think this team's been in? The net punt average tonight on that first kick, obviously 42 for Hayden Feld, and we'll track that all night as well. Sam Simmons gives Northwestern some of its best opening field position at the 28. 52. On the punt by Hayden Felder Position comes back 20 and a late flag. Well, the Northwestern defense did their job. Now that offense has got to, they showed flashes. They've shown flashes of big plays, but then they've just either killed themselves by a mistake or the Nebraska defense has just shut them down. And so much for the relatively yeah. <laughs> good field position. All weekend on ESPN Classic. We celebrate college football's bowl season. Revisit the. Did you get on Flutie? Uh, none. We won. I did block a punt in the game. How many sacks did you get on Flutie? I got none, Bill. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> Send it uh, quickly down below to Michelle Tafoya. Well, guys, while the Nebraska defense was on the bench, they were working to stay focused because after forcing a couple of three and outs, they were getting rest, but the defensive coaches were warning them against letdowns. But I got to tell you, there were quite a few smiles popping up on this Nebraska defensive bench. I bet there is a huge grin on Bandit Bosch's face at the moment. Boy, boy, he just is. And at this point, we've talked about how Leon Brockmeyer's just not been able to block him, and they haven't helped him at all. It's not really in the scheme of this offense that be able to help the end. The offensive lineman has to make the play. They don't really chip him with the backs because they're in the in the, the route. Yeah, if you're not playing with two backs or a tight end, you just can't do it. Well, Preston calls a timeout. I'm 41 and a half. With Bill Curry, Mike Olick, and Michelle Tafoya, Dave Barnett, and the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, 21-10 Nebraska. And starting from their four, the Wildcats, two stocks throwing deep one on one out of his end zone and incomplete intended for Johnson, covered every step of the way by Craig. And our Aflac trivia question for tonight, Northwestern has just one bowl victory in its history. What is the only current major conference program that has never won a bowl game? Oh, that's easy. It is? I have no idea. <laughs> Me neither. Actually, you, you could use a little logic, probably figure it out. Right? Like I said. <laughs> Northwestern's lone victory with 49 rows over California. He stopped pitching in his own end zone, and Anderson just barely manages to avoid a safety. Vanden Bosch having the half of his life now. You know what is amazing about him is we've seen him get up the field to get in Kustak's face. This now running play, watch him go side to side, up the field, good hand placement, then side to side. A good job of breaking down the field off the block. Very, very quick. Not big, he's only about 260, but he plays with great technique and speed. Nico cut it after two stop on third and 13 from his half yard line. Ends out of room, has to throw it away. And the Nebraska defense, fellas, having no trouble maintaining their intensity. I tell you, these guys came here to prove something, whatever it is, Nebraska tradition, or we deserve to be in the Orange Bowl, or whatever it is, they are playing inspired football, and nobody has to tell you that if you've been watching. I think they're going to get good field position again, Dave. I don't guess yet. Standing. Standing. Right back up against his end line and a high short kick fielded at the 40 by Bobby Newcomb. That's a huge out. block. Here he goes. Newcomb inside the 10. This is a guy that leads Johnny Rogers all-time Nebraska record by a yard and a half. His average 17.8 yards. Is 1.5 better than the great Heisman Trophy winner, Johnny Rogers. That's how good Newcomb has been. Beautiful peripheral vision the capacity to see where the open spaces are and to use his blockers. That's Bobby Newcomb.
and to think this guy was a quarterback at one time. Ends his career as he began it as a wing back. Crouch will turn it up and get nailed after a pickup of one. Now, part of Nebraska's recent war, the unselfishness displayed by Bobby Newcomb when things weren't going as well as expected offensively. Early the 99 season, a couple games in. Newcomb made way for Crouch, moved back to his old wing back position, and they took off and almost ran the table. Lost and he did it with he did it with the right attitude, and, and you have to really credit the coaching staff. Frank Solich, the head coach, personally intervened, spoke with both players, and made sure that everybody understood that it was best for the team, and it worked. Second and goal to go from the seven. Crouch with a play pick. It's up on the one purple jersey. And Raheem Covington does manage to prevent a touchdown with the two. Well, I tell you what, this is some impressive defense right now by Northwestern. Their special teams put them in a bad situation. And right now they've answered the call. Playing with a little more attitude right now, a little more pop. We, we, we've seen them out man. We've seen a lot of white shirts on the purple shirts. Or the black shirts. Colorblind, uh, probably. Man. Purple and black. Yeah. They got some purple in the two, a leap by Perot Buckhalter, and he got in. Touchdown. And there's some torsos that's got some purple on them now. Under the shoulder pads and the jersey because they're getting bruised and they're getting knocked off the ball. This is nothing but old down and dirty short yardage goal line football. Man on man. Get your pads down. Let's see who's the toughest. Watch the line move backwards and give Buckhalter room to get up and over from a good launching spot. That's what goal line football is about. After looking at a 20 point unanswered streak by Nebraska, now the special teams for Northwestern trying to get a little antsy in their desire to block this kick and there's movement and a flag before the ball is even snapped. You said it about the goal line. You're exactly right, Bill. It's Low man wins. Part of the snap. Offside. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. Retry. And what what needed to happen in that situation when the D line gets down low is the linebackers have to be able to make the play whenever you have a jumper, and they weren't able to do it. Now set for John Garrison snap. Dan Hayden fells hold and Josh Brown's fourth PAT of the night. So Crouch, Alexander, and Buck Halter. In succession with Nebraska touchdowns after the brief 10 to 7 Northwestern. Go, All right, again, Northwestern one bowl win about 52 years ago in the Rose. The only current major conference program that has never won a bowl game, that would be Rutgers. They've only been in one at home, the 78 Garden State Bowl at Giant Stadium. They lost to Arizona State. That, I, was, I give you long enough, you figure. You know out. what? I was I was working my way down. I knew you were. And I was probably about 40, 45 away from that one. <laughs> you know, the radio show, the radio show I do with, with Mike Greenberg on uh, on ESPN, we do a, a, a trivia thing called the Bob Picozzi on update diet. Update guy comes on, and does his did you nosy, and I never get them right. Never, ever, ever, ever. And I there was, did. There I, was, was, I was one for one. You were. and there, there, So there was no way I was ever going to even get close to getting any of these questions right. But he asked who scored a touchdown in the game that I played in. Yeah. <laughs> Super Bowl V. Yeah, you think that was a setup? Well, I didn't, I didn't help set it up. Number 18, Teddy Johnson, the deep return man for Northwestern. Chase Long has been kicking him long all night. And again, Northwestern will have to settle for starting at the 20. Another major contrast that we ought to point out is the performance of the special teams and just little details like right. Nebraska kicking the ball into the end zone. So Northwestern's always starting at its 20. By contrast, Northwestern's tried to do the little chip shot thing, has not covered it well. They end up playing from their own 40 yard line or the other team's 40, and it's cost them. It's a great point, coach. Now Thank you. Crew stock were better than six of 19 through the air. You look at what Northwestern's offense has produced all year long, and you've had a lot of cause for optimism that he may get there going, but nothing so far through the air, and now there's not much for him on the ground. Lags after the hit by Vandenbosch, his latest tackle. 
You see all those gashes in Vandenbosch's <laughs> helmet? Those didn't come from dragging his helmet to practice down the sidewalk. That's from sticking it That's right in your opponent's smashing. face. Boy, that's adding insult to injury. This guy, and a lot of times this happens on backside plays. He goes unblocked. But they've got to well, they, they were trying to. They, the blocker missed him. The running back came in. You see him diving in there, missed the block. They've got a way to deal with that. We pointed out earlier that Kustak can actually read him. And when he comes down inside like that, they've got a naked bootleg where Kustak reads it and comes out and takes advantage of it. But they haven't. They need to run it, Bill. They need to run it. I agree. <laughs> and he's reading straight out of Stephen King. Half pay. The goal, the mark out. And they go from the 10, slam in. That play had some potential, but incomplete. Intended for John Schweigert and Michelle Tafoya. Dave, Mike, Bill, this is not a news flash, but the Northwestern bench is pretty mad right now. We've got profanity, we've got players yelling at each other, but we also have players saying, hey, this is Michigan all over again. Remember, comebacks were a big part of their regular season. Michelle, can you tell us what they were saying? Um, <laughs> I'd be fired, and so would our producer. <laughs> but that might not be a bad <laughs> thing. <laughs> But that would be a very bad no, thing. No, we, we want to keep Tom Archer down there. Yeah. Yeah. We want to keep you down there. We want to keep the boat, the boat of you. <laughs> You've established the general thought. Third and 20. And the boss getting to him again. It's almost like he's playing a different game from all the people blocking. Bill, at this point, don't you have to change your scheme a little bit and chip him? You've got to get some help on him. Brockmeyer not getting the job done. It's one-on-one -on -one every time, and he's beating him. When you shape an offensive system, you shape it based on certain assumptions. The assumption at Northwestern is we can block them as long as they're bringing only four. It isn't working tonight. It has worked all year prior to this. Adjust, adjust, adjust. The Stanbring kicked one off the side of his foot. He didn't need that. And what he'll get is out of bounds at the 26, a 21-yard shank by Stanbring. Let me just complete the thought. It's entirely possible that there is not a way in their system to assist a situation like this when somebody's just getting beat up personally. But that's got to be a flaw, Bill. I mean, don't you have to be ready for every situation? If your man is getting what he's getting taken behind the woodshed right now, you've got to be able to adjust to, adjust to that. A good offense has to be like a good religion. You have to have an answer for everything. <laughs> but it looks to you and me as if Northwestern does not have an answer yep. for this. I don't know who they're going to put over there because they don't have enough people. Short as Stephen yet. Faced by the Huskers. Alexander running over purple jerseys to the 10. A wrecking ball. 15 yards. Rashad Morton this time, number 24, the free safety, got some of uh, Alexander's shoulder pad in the mouth. Dan's a gentle, nice person off the field. On the field, he likes to look up little guys. Boom, just like that. <laughs> this guy's going to play for a long time, and I, I get a feeling he's going to do something else special in his life. Bright guy. Very impressive. Nine carries, average of 13.8. Two touchdowns already. Only 11. Billy Miller, the fullback. That's the fullback, Billy Miller. The well, let me show you something about Alexander when he runs. And remember I talked about the offensive line and the blocking at the, the beginning of the game. There's a common theme here when you see Alexander running the ball. Let's see if we can all figure it out. There's a touchdown. Breaks it outside around the end. And then another touchdown run. The common theme here, nobody's touching him. He's not getting touched until he's way downfield. That line's doing a great job. Oh, Alexander never had control, and Green Missouri takes it away for the Wildcats. And if you're Northwestern, you just have to pray that Nebraska is going to do something to make a mistake. And maybe just the slightest edge of complacency, even unconscious, you put the ball on the ground. Now Northwestern's got to produce something. Their second turnover. Hardly a surprise Missouri's around it. He led the Big Ten, forcing five fumbles. This was 
Unforced there by Alexander, but Missouri right there in the neighborhood of the big play. Well, he was on that thing like a duck on a June bug, and that's exactly the way they've got to play defense this whole night, just fighting and scratching to stay alive. They have averaged gaining 1.7 yards on first down. A little bit better than that, but not much better by Anderson on this first down. Thursday, January 11th at 10 p.m. Join us as we announce the nominees for the ESPY Awards. The nominations coming up. Well, they try to get Anderson established. Two carries he picks up right at six yards. One of the big differences you're seeing in these running games was when the Nebraska runs, that offensive line is moving Northwestern defense off the ball. When Northwestern is running the ball, they are more finesse blockers. They can't, they're not blowing people off the line of scrimmage, and Nebraska is controlling the line of scrimmage. Plus, they're blocking out a two-point stance. It's very hard to run block out of a two-point stance. The least you want after a takeaway by your defense is a first down, and they don't even come close on the two-stock keeper, Jamie Burrell, the middle linebacker, has it. And that's one of the few plays that the middle linebacker has been required to make. I said that the middle linebacker, thinking of mostly of Carlos Polk, who is a starter, is going to have to dominate tonight. He has not had to do that because they haven't been able to break the line of scrimmage. And Mike, you're exactly right. Dominant performance, both sides of the ball, by the big guys. Sandring, after the shank, follows up with a much more representative effort. But Walker caught it on the run, breaks the tackle. Now hemmed in, outnumbered at the 46. That punt 38 and the return 38 seven. yards on the punt by Stanley. I'll tell you what, I don't know if Northwestern defense can be sprinting on the field too much anymore. They've been on the field a long time. And in the first quarter, Northwestern actually had about a three-minute time advantage. But that's certainly not the case in the second quarter. One thing that is continuing for them, they were plus 11 for the year turnover ratio. They're plus two tonight, although... Nothing to show for it at this point. You get a turnover for your offense, nothing happens. That's another little demoralizing feature. Alexander one fumble. Great fake carried out by Eric Crouch. And again, a 13. Michelle Tafoya. Well, Dave, nothing to show for it yet, but defensive coordinator Jerry Brown told the Northwestern players after they forced that last turnover, that was one big step. Let's keep taking one big step at a time. Keep fighting, and keep in mind 11. We've got to get 11 to the ball. Brown saying before this game that they, they simply could not possibly duplicate the Nebraska speed in practice. But to stay in this game, they had to swarm. They had to get turnovers, and they've got a couple of state disciplined against the option. Not such a high grade there. Off tackle, defended well, Alexander to the 40. And let's check in for a look at what Reese Davis has in store for us at the half. All right, Dave, coming up on the Dodge Different Halftime Report, a couple of thrillers in the NFL playoffs. We'll give you some highlights on that. Also, look ahead to the Orange Bowl. Steve Cyphers and Shelly Smith are there. And also, Halftime Bowl Blitz. Now, history could be repeating itself for Lou Holtz. Rod Gilmore's here. We'll see you in a bit. All right, Reese. We have 2.47 to go before halftime. Second and nine. And the 40 of Northwestern. Outcoach creeping up. Good roll, pass, diving catch. Nicely done by Troy Hasselbrook. And did you see Crouch get his shoulders around and deliver that football with precision and touch? That's how he threw in warm-ups, and that's what he's capable of. His coaches have got him over there just saying, Eric, all you got to do is calm down now. Yes, you are a tough guy, but just get those shoulders around, follow through, nice throw, nice catch. First catch of the year by Hasselbrook, sophomore to Lincoln. It looks like he's done it before. It's the third completion by Crouch. Good gracious. First How's that two? for a quarterback sneak? <laughs> I mean, you got road grade. Did you draw that up for four yards? Oh, Lord have mercy. And I was a center. I wish once in my life we could have looked like that on a quarterback sneak. Yeah, and understand that this, this, this Nebraska offense has been doing this for years. Since 1978, they've been in the top six every year in rushing 
offense. I mean, they're, they're a machine year in and year out. Wins come and trends go, and Nebraska runs through all of them. Wide open, broken up. John Bowling thought he had six, and Harold Blackman, who set a single season school record last year, breaking up 17 passes, prevented six. Well, he should have had six. I mean, we had him wide open, under through the ball. Exactly what we've been talking about. The play action off the option is so deceptive for the secondary. There's nobody with the receiver. All he's got to do is lay it out. But you see, his receiver has to let up, yep, and that yep. allows Blackman Ladies time to get back. He sprints 20 yards to get to that football. It should have been no question that it was an easy touch for John Bowen. Blackman, the career leader in passes, broke it up. Worked long and hard on his hands during the summer, and he the second of the conference with five picks. Close to that one. Pump fake. Now another man. Going deep and uncatchable for Davison. Wow. Yeah, he, he had another one. Now that time he did have Kevin Bentley in his face, but another pass, another off the mark pass by our crowd. Well, in Eric's defense, he's not a quarterback that goes on the practice field and works for an hour and a half a day on dropping back and throwing the ball. Right. He works on running the option, deception, some of the things that we've seen work so beautifully for them, and then he commits a lesser amount of time to the passing game and so he's just not as precise but he is capable of it I saw him do it having been too many third and longs for the Huskers they blitz him on third and ten for Newcomb off the fingertips again of Blackman and this kind of series is emblematic of what you said early in the game Mike if they get in a spot where they have to throw uh, he's in trouble yeah. because he's just not polished at those little fine things and mainly just hitting receivers. He had receivers open for touchdowns twice in this drive. Now Josh Brown was a major question mark much of the year for Nebraska. He did win the Colorado game on the last play, a first in school history. And Nebraska calls time here. His career long field goal, 42 yards in the conference championship on this field against Texas last year. Did you know? Nebraska has used its second time out. Josh Brown would have uh, attempted a 46 yard field goal unless they have rethought things on the fourth and 10. Well, let me tell you. They will send him back out there. Yeah, warm up. He he hit a 58 yarder into the net. Dodge different halftime report. Reese Davis, Rodney Gilmore coming. 42 yards here last year. His best field ever. 40 field goal it was his longest this year, hitting just five out of ten. This is actually going to be 47 yards. Longer than that if they still attempt it. <laughs> After a timeout. That's, that's it's always such yeah. a mystery how you come out and use too much time. That, that, that's inexcusable is what it is. Dead ball, delay, five-yard penalty, repeat, fourth down. Unless they just wanted to see him kick it farther. <laughs> <laughs> the little bitty things in bowl games, you haven't practiced this situation probably, although they work very hard on special teams. If Northwestern can mount a comeback, that might come back to home. Well, officially 51 yards, and he has plenty of leg, and he is good. Is and he good. has an Alamo Bowl record. Previous longest, Kyle Bryant, a 49-yarder for Texas A&M, and 95 against Michigan. Maybe that's what they were doing. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> All right. Only a D lineman would say that. <laughs> but your scout report, obviously, they were seeing the same Let thing you were you. in pregame. He, he was 55, 58 yards. And like I said, he was hitting the back of the net. He was really powerful. Yeah, he, he had it. both kickers kicked very well in warm-ups. Michelle mentioned that the, the rallying cry on the Northwestern bench was, this is just like Michigan. And indeed, it was at that time. But at Michigan, by the half, Northwestern had pulled back within 28, 23. And that's not what's happening here. They really had all the momentum going in the locker room. I just watched that game today. So they're going to need to try to do it in the third quarter. Unless they can get something here in a minute and 28 seconds. Northwestern would need to do a little something about that average starting position. They're 19, but Chase Long has uh, been a touchback machine most of his first half, and they haven't had much to say about it. 
Eddie Johnson. He's on his goal line, hoping to get at least a chance to return one. And he will here. Alleyway, looks for a cut back. That's as good as they've had it at the 30. Willie Amos brought him down to return to 31. 31 yards on the kickoff return by Teddy Johnson. And a minute 17 to work with. Nebraska's really dominated the special teams play here, and that was a real emphasis. Coach Solich was adamant about that when we interviewed him and talked to him about this game. He said, we have really been so disappointed with our special teams. We've hammered at it in preparation. It certainly paid off for him tonight. Down through his trouble, says his confidence never wavered. You say the same for a lot of the Nebraska fans. Anderson at last. Room to run. Can Randy Stella catch him? No. Nope. Touchdown. Bottled up all night. And he hits it for 69 yards. Well, yesterday at the, the luncheon for the ball, I was sitting with the Nebraska players, and there were a couple of defensive players that said Damian Anderson is not going to get 100 yards. Well, he certainly may get 100 yards because of that run. They've kept him, as you said, they bottled up most of the night. But that's how explosive this offense is. Give them a little hole. They like to stretch you out, get use their speed. Once they break through that line, they've got a chance. The very weakness that we talked about earlier, not having a tight end or two backs to help a tackle is a strength here because the tacklers are spread all over the field. So when he pops the line of scrimmage, he's off. So long, remember. Shake it up after making a kickoff coverage tackle. Some question whether he'd return. He is in. He hits it. And Damian Anderson on his 11th carry. 75 yards now after this 69-yard sprint. Well, we've seen good play in the middle and on the line for Nebraska, but this time a good trap right here leaves the middle wide open. Look at all that area and nobody home. That's what this offense looks for space create space they're not about blowing you off the line of scrimmage they're not about getting in your face they're about creating space by traps and spreading you out and mike scott shanley number 43 the strong linebacker was right in the hole all he had to do is square up and make the play anderson was too quick burst away from him and then outran everybody in the nebraska secondary and that is saying a mouthful Only LaDainian Tomlinson of TCU. Number 99. Damian Anderson this year. He's just a junior. But when you talk about his personal achievements, he comes back to you with the question. Well, why didn't we have any all-conference selections on the guys who were blocking for me and opening up all those holes? Yeah, that time there it was Jeff Rail who transferred over from Notre Dame and sat out last year, and he's the offensive newcomer of the year, the lineman. And a nice block on that. Over. Stella returns it pretty well across the 35. They've averaged now starting at the northwestern 45-yard line, 30 on the return. Let's check in with Michelle. You guys were talking about the offensive linemen and not getting the kudos, perhaps, by the media and the press that they felt they should have. But they said, you know what, we don't care. When we're 75 years old, we'll be telling our grandkids we blocked for Damian Anderson. They won't care whether or not we made first team all Big Ten. I, I would want to care. That's what they say now. <laughs> yeah. But I, you I, are I, not I, an offensive lineman. We're used to laboring in obscurity. Yeah, where you belong. <laughs> <laughs> Anderson left a minute two on the clock for Crouch. And writing him down, Napoleon Harris. Crouch on the quarterback key. Get first by linebacker Napoleon Harris. Not your conventional two-minute drill with Nebraska. <laughs> Huskers have one timeout of no apparent mind to use it. Crouch is 3 of 10, 22 and a pick through the air. But 70 and a touchdown on his 10 carries. And Alexander already has an Alamo Bowl record. 119 rushing yards. Oh. Newcomb. One man with an angle. No touchdown. Everything Northwestern does 
Nebraska has an answer. 58 yards with 19 seconds before halftime. Could it be any more demoralizing? <laughs> but no, no, the answer to that question is no. It cannot get any more demoralizing than that. Four wide receivers set. Quick underneath screen. Great blocking downfield. And again, gets breaks the tackle early and then doesn't get touched till the two-yard line. Round for the PAT. It's true that Bobby Newcomb has marvelous running ability on the punt return earlier, but it's also true that somebody has to do a great job of blocking in a situation like this. All squared up right there. Good job. Matt Davison, number three. And then just speed from their own. Here's determination to get into the end zone. He knows the guy's on him. Look at him try and break away. He's getting ready to dive for that end zone. He was not going to be denied that end zone. Again, when was he touched? That was the first time he was touched. Well, Matt Davidson took care of that yes, he did. little issue up there. But you know, there should have been black shirts sprinting inside yeah, exactly. out. Exactly. And what happens is maybe you score and you think, okay, we're going to go in at the half and the score is going to be that. You've got to play to the end of the half. There have been two points where uh, Northwestern could feel pretty good about itself. They went ahead 10 to 7. Mm -hmm. One play later, they were behind 14 10. They get the big play by Damian Anderson and two plays later with officially 20 seconds before they can head to the locker room. Newcomb snuffs the uh, happy feeling right back down their throats. Don't really let you enjoy it much, do they? No, they don't. 31 <laughs> second quarter points. And, uh, you know, 18 seconds still on the clock. <laughs> Will it be only 31? Everything's called into question now. You know, also at this luncheon, there were a couple of defenses that, that kind of took it personal when people were saying this could be a 45-40 game. There were two defenses saying, wait a minute. We don't, we don't want to let these teams go. Right, right now, the Nebraska defense is winning that argument. He's got hit as he's trying to loop it over Roger Jordan. Pass for Seven to three at the end of the first. Clint Finley from and Pearl, Nebraska Texas. responded Finley. to the, the brief lead that the Wildcats enjoyed at 10 to seven. Second quarter could be a final score alone. It could. Thirty-one in the second. David Anderson had exactly <laughs> one play to enjoy in this first half. And the Wildcats will avoid further damage. Not all you can say. Eric Crouch leads a monumental Cornhusker effort in the second quarter. And they're running Northwestern off the field literally and figuratively right now. Halftime of the Sylvania Alamo Bowl, 38 to 17. Now the Dodge different. Halftime report with Reese Davis and Rodney Gilmore. And half, Nebraska 38, Northwestern 17 is our score in the Sylvania Alamo Bowl. This was supposed to be a solid uh, win for Nebraska, and in the second quarter alone, 31 points. That's a school record for a bowl. 119 rushing yards already is an Alamo Bowl game record for Dan Alexander. Yeah, and, and I talked about it at the top of the game. The offensive line, they're the ones leading the charge. They're blowing the black and purple shirts back off the line of scrimmage. Watch, Alexander's not even getting touched. Look at the hole. It's absolutely incredible. Again, when's the first time he gets touched? Eight yards down the field. And look who's right down with him. That's all the offensive linemen. Now, this is a great power run by Alexander. And then he finishes it by jumping over the top. Just a fantastic job by the offensive line and by Alexander. But you know what? The defense maligned a little bit coming in statistically, but they're stepping up. They're stepping up, and the most deceiving stat we have around here is three tackles for Kyle Vandenbosch. Yeah. He has dominated this football game in a way that I have not seen a defensive lineman dominate in many, many a year. Watch him go down the line of scrimmage to make the play on the run, batting balls and quarterbacks every which way, running over the big offensive tackle, Brockmeyer, sprinting out on the option pitch to make the play at the sideline. He is everywhere. 
And we had him down as a great academic Vincent P. Dratty Award winner. Right now, he looks like a Heisman defensive winner. Well, you look at 290 total yards and 210 on the ground for Nebraska. And 146 on the ground, fairly representative for Northwestern, but only 28 through the air. And Zach Kustak has at no point resembled the passer he was during the regular season. Kustak is 6 of 21, 28 passing yards, dampening the hoped for comeback for the Wildcats. Randy Stella returns the second half kick 21 yards. Now that's the first time that Northwestern has lined up and kicked the ball deep and look where Nebraska's starting Mike. Uh, and now let's see if they if, if Northwestern can build on this thing. <laughs> David interesting you talk about Kustak not getting the passing going. Sometimes players trade things after bowl games. I would say Kustak would want to maybe trade jerseys with Vanden Bosch since Vanden Bosch has been on him more than his jersey. He may not have to ask for it. It may just uh, occur. <laughs> but Vanden Bosch has got his jersey. Yeah. It's a natural physical exchange at this rate. Eric Crouch, keeper, five yards, and let's check in downstairs with Michelle Tafoy. Well, Dave, I spent halftime in the Northwestern locker room pretty sober, obviously. Before the coaches came in, the players were trying to rally one another. A lot of focus being paid attention to the offensive line saying, hey, it starts up front, and we know that. One player said, hey, let's play for pride, to which another responded, I don't know about you, but I'm playing to win. I don't want to play for pride. When the coaches did finally arrive, there was not a lot of fiery talk. That's not Walker's style. Just a lot of X's and O's and reminders that there's plenty of time left. Alexander back at it. 50 40 of Northwestern Conrad Emmerich chases him down from defensive end 33 more yards every step of the Alamo Bowl record and again when was he touched I mean the holes are huge you've also got wide receivers blocking incredibly well once you get to the outside Tom Beveridge is going to come and block down oh what a fantastic Blocked down by the split end to open it up to the outside. Alexander again. Cuts back and settles for about three. The old record was Cedric Shaw's 113 yards for Iowa against Texas Tech Alexander again four the years ago. And uh, at this rate, Alexander may double, may triple that. Put it out of reach. The line good. Of in fact, Shaw's effort, the only 100-yard effort in the history of the Alamo Bowl, which is just a in its eighth year, but right now 156 and counting and a 12 yard per carry clip. No telling where he'll put it when it's all over. Crouch, the late pitch is bobble picked back up by Correll Buckhalter. Runs out of 36. Crouch on the Boy, Bill, Crouch is fun to watch. You just never know when he's going to pitch the ball. He could be turning the quarter. He'll pitch it 20 yards down the field. He's always thinking, always looking, always seeing how he can improve the play. He's such an athlete, and, and what, what you do with the option if you're the quarterback is you run a diagonal pattern toward the sideline, keep a good pitch relationship, and the back has to be able to keep that relationship, and he needs to catch the ball, which Buckholder did not do then. But by and large, they have. He counts as a great athlete. As he said here with three wide on third and six. There's a quarterback draw. Crouch has room. What else is new? Still on his feet at the 14. <laughs> and the hoped for third quarter let down for Nebraska on the part of the Wildcats. Well, it's not happening so far. Absolutely opened it up. Then at the end of the run, Bobby Newcomb, number 12, gets the block downfield. Again, a planned quarterback draw, fade back, sell the pass, then look for the hole. You see the fullback going up the block. Now watch number 12, Newcomb, down there blocking, blocking, blocking. Crouch goes to the outside. And let's not fool anybody here. Crouch is going to be one of the best college quarterbacks around. He's not going to go on and play quarterback in the NFL, but he is going to dominate the college level the way he is right now. 22 yards. Buck Halter squeezing to the 11 and then driven back. There are a few... In fact, a number of pretty proud Wildcat defenders down there that have had it handed to them. And on occasion, a Missouri, a Silva, rising up, trying to stem this tide. But again, this was a defense rate, 82nd 
against the run, giving up a buck 82 on the ground, and they gave up more than that just in the first half. And they do have a history of comebacks. This isn't Minnesota that's up on a 21. Nothing against the Gophers, but you get Nebraska at your best. You're a Wildcat defender tonight. Crouch to the end zone, diving is Matt Davison. Touchdown. That's the crouch we saw before the game. Patiently standing, threading the needle. Nice job, nice throw. Wonderful catch, and especially on the artificial turf. For Davison to hang on, those balls usually pop out when they land. Matt Davison, the first Husker since Johnny Rogers to lead the team in receiving three straight years. Extra point. By Brown makes it 45 17 and Nebraska now owns the team scoring record for the Alamo Bowl. The old one was 37 by Purdue in California. 45 and counting at the moment. Back in the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, the Sylvania Alamo Bowl, and so much for the thought that Nebraska might rest on the big second quarter lead they built. They go seven plays, 79 yards to begin the second half. And Chase Long continues to put on a kickoff clinic. 45 points, the new bowl record. Davison, that dive 11 yards up, completes the latest scoring mark. It is reminiscent, uh, Mike and Bill, of what they did in the Fiesta four years ago to Florida, 62-24. We may be looking at a final like that because it's that type of effort by Nebraska we're seeing tonight. Damian Anderson, 69-yarder in the first half, and they get him loose. He gets a downfield block by Sam Simmons and ridden out at the 23-yard line, and with the long runs, that Anderson has had this year, and this one's 57. How much credit do you give to the downfield blocking bill? Enormous amount of credit. These receivers are trained and grilled by Randy Walker and his assistant coaches. They must be blockers if they want to get on the field. So the old glamour thing's out the window at Northwestern for the wide receivers. The black shirt said it wouldn't be done. They wouldn't give up 100. David Anderson. They've got him at 140. 13 carries. Double reverse. Simmons. Good idea. Troy Watchorn was right there. Uh, real shock who turned that one back in and to Watchorn. That was Kyle Vandenbosch. Again, doing a great job. Zach Kustak tried to block. Tried to block Vandenbosch, and that wasn't happening. This give is to Kevin Lawrence, Anderson's understudy, the third leading rusher. 348 Lawrence, yards during the season. He's brought down by Carlos Polk. All right American. back in comes Anderson. You're right, Dave. And the All-American Carlos Pope has been very quiet tonight. I thought it would be the kind of game we'd have to make a lot of those plays. We can't run it back because Northwestern's too fast, but he made a nice form tackle. Quicker pace than usual for the Wildcats for obvious reasons. Throw on the run by Kustak goes to the 12-yard line, and they should mark that to, to Sam Simmons. Good enough for a first down, ridden down by Walker. And this is more the Northwestern offense. Chip it away, chip it away. Don't put yourself in too long a third down situation. Just move the chains and take it down the field. Big run helps. <laughs> it's a testament to Nebraska defensive effort. Kustak less than 33 percent through the year. He keeps. Down to the eight. What made Northwestern the third best offense in the country this year was the fact that Anderson was going 174 yards per game, but Kustak was matching that and some nights bettering it with 200, 250 through the air. Throwing the ball, right. Exactly. The air game hasn't been there. Muska's taken it away. Anderson trips. As he tries to make his cut inside of Jeremy Selecta. They're starting to set, keep running that option play, Bill, that you talked Jeremy about earlier, Selecta. where they give it to Anderson, but Kustak is reading the backside end to see what he's doing. So I'll be surprised if 
Kustak pulls it out there and tries to take it around end as they're trying to converge on Damian Anderson. Yeah, as we showed in the first quarter, he actually looks at the five technique, the defensive end, to see where he's going. Third and six for the first. Eight for the touchdown, quarterback draw, Kustak fools no one. And I'm not thinking you're settling for three. No, here they need if to, you're Randy Walker. They need to go for the touchdown. Yep. They need touchdowns. They do not need field goals when it's 45 to 17. They're going to stay right out there and try to get it in the end zone. That's exactly the right thing to do. Fourth and four for the first. Six for the touch. This is into the Nebraska fans end zone. Tough to be heard. Kustak slips the handoff to Anderson. Nailed at the five. The Nebraska front is actually baiting Northwestern. They've really studied them. This is where you have time to study. They bait him into making the call for the off tackle to the left. And then they slant into it. They're perfectly prepared. Slant right into it with the stunt. Right there to make the play is Jason Lohr, number 70, on the line stop. And look at Vandenbosch again, going upfield, and closing it down, making him go inside, and then falling back and getting in on a part of the tackle. He is playing very disciplined ball out there, not letting anything get outside him. And when it breaks inside, he falls back in for the tackle. Is that how you used to do it? Absolutely. But I'll tell you. Huskers actually have to start with bad field position because of the great play by their defense. It's a new statement every series, no matter which of their units happens to be on the field. And Silva with the tackle here at the line of scrimmage. Well, you heard Michelle talk about what went on in the locker room at halftime. One player play saying, let's play for pride. Another one saying, let's play for the win. They need to get on the same page of what they're playing for, but the bottom line is they've got to stop this offense. That's been running all over them all night. No gain for Willie Miller. Pass and hook in motion on second and ten. Crouch. We'll make it third and short. And let's check in with Michelle. Well, and speaking of playing for pride or whatever it is that Nebraska wants to prove, Eric Crouch came into this game saying to finish 9-3 and three would be below our standards. 10-2 and two is all we will accept right now. We still believe we're the best team out there. He also said the perfect game is still out there. We haven't had all three phases of the game peak in any one game this season. They've had two turnovers today. Other than that, Coach Curry, how close to perfect are they today, Nebraska? Real close, Michelle. <laughs> Very good point, and he did say that to us. And um, they are striving. That's what they're here to do. They're trying to play the best football they've played all year. And here we sit at 45-17, and it looks like they might just pull it off. 45-17, midway of the third quarter. Nobody in red has moved from the Alamo Dome. There might be a seat or two of purple that was previously occupied. These uh, owners are now on the river thinking about something else. On third and two, it doesn't matter. Third and two, third and 20. Danny Alexander is going to pick it up tonight. Alexander Michelle. The carry from the Huskers. Well, during that last time out, Eric Crouch came to the sidelines. Apparently, he had broken the string in his shoulder pads. So one of the assistant coaches took off his credential and used the string, which is pretty strong, by the way, holding his credential around his neck, got the equipment manager to cut it and tie Crouch's shoulder pads back together with that red credential cord, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Improvisation. At least he's credential. Yes, he is properly credential. <laughs> he won't get kicked out. He can uh, go interview himself after the game. <laughs> Crouch ready to go deep for Newcomb. Oh. Closest man to it was Raheem Covington. Now that was ugly. Oh, that, yeah. that made him look like he had credentials in his shoulder pads. Yeah. He just swung it up there for no good reason to no particular spot. You get the feeling that Crouch lacks confidence in his arm, and he really shouldn't. I mean, he has yeah. the ability to do it. It's a matter of discipline and probably just reps. You know, they keep saying we haven't had a complete effort this year. I'm thinking of a few teams who disagree with that. 
Texas Tech's worst loss in school history, 56-3, October 14th, put on him by Alexander and company. And this latest gash reaches the 42. That's 24 more. But you know, Dave, he didn't say a complete game. He said a perfect game. We haven't played a perfect game. Now perfect being, I, I guess, 62-24 for the national championship over the Well, yeah, and, that, and Florida was, Florida was a, a little bit more complete team than Northwestern has been able to develop so far. Seven plays, 20 or more. Alexander has turned in more than his share. Nine more here. He nine edges yards for Dan closer Go yet to 200. Sports Center will follow with Reese Davis and Steve Verthium. Wild card had some wild finishes today. The championship rematch between uh, Tennessee and UConn. Women's Oops and the Tour de Mario continues. Sports Center comes up following the Sylvania Alamo Bowl. Midfield. Second and two. Buck Halter's turn to break tackles and run out of bounds at the 29. Look at that guy smoke him. And that's your backup tailback? Yeah. Now, how would you like to play with that guy, Buck Halter, as your backup tailback? How about this for a burst? He's to the outside before they realize what's happening. And he outruns the defensive backs down the sideline. And he's another 2,000-yard rusher, ranking number eight on the charts. And he has a backup. The two of them together. Time. Alexander and Buckhalter together, 1,904 yards out of that high-back position. Buckhalter not touched until about eight yards into the Wildcat defense, and he picks up 11. And, and about Buck, Buckhalter's only had 10 starts in his career, and he's eighth all-time on the chart. As, as we mentioned at the top, you just mentioned, he hit the 2,000 career mark. Crouch has hit it, and Alexander hit it. All three are first time in NCAA history that three hit it in the same year. I mean, they're just, they're devastating on the ground. They just drive 77 yards. Here's the ninth snap of the drive, and Buck Halter is undercut at the 15 by Covington. So in this day and age, and, and this was a lot of the discussion coming into this game, recruiting, first, spreading out the talent, you could have the rise and rise again of a Northwestern. But Nebraska continues to get the Nebraska types. It may be easier because so many people are throwing the ball now. They may have an easier time, maybe, Bill, cornering this type of running pass. But Halter trips at the six, and it's first and goal from there. You are exactly right. A running, passing quarterback, a guy like Crouch, is going to want to come here. Scott Frost went to Stanford, then transferred back and became a great quarterback here, led them to a national title or part of a national title. And you can go chapter and verse the great backs that have gone to Nebraska. And they want to be with those big hog linemen. That, they love it. That's what I was going to yeah, say. Those you guys, a lot of them are walk-ons yeah. from in-state, and then they become scholarship-type players. Put that old line picture on the screen, and those are what Nebraska players look like. That culture picks his way. We're a couple down to the three hit by Napoleon Harris. But that is amazing, though. You're right that, that these players, these linemen, come on as walk-ons, earn starting jobs, and become All-Americans. The kids grow up in the state of Nebraska on the farm or otherwise, and they think, I would just love to play for the Cornhuskers. It's the only, it's, there's not a pro team there. So you got a kid 6'5", 220 pounds. Three years later, he's 295, and he's ready to go. Buck Coulter spins and one of the few negative plays for the Nebraska offense as Salem Simon, the defensive tackle, knocks it back. One thing you have to do defensively, and Jerry Brown, the defensive quarter coordinator for Northwestern, is more than aware you've got to attack. You've got to be hitting the gaps. You've got to take some chances, and it's going to cost you some big runs. Right. But hopefully you can get some hits in the backfield and try to get this juggernaut slowed up. But that is the way to, to stop this offense and slow it up is to either make Crouch hang on to the ball behind the line before he turns it up or make penetration before those big running backs can bust through the line. With the play clock down to one, Nebraska uses the timeout. 4.09 to go. They're on the doorstep again. Remember Jared from Subway? And then right now, the Northwestern Wildcats playing the part of the outnumbered, beleaguered Texians. 
1836. Nebraska having a party. 45 17, 402 to go. Third quarter. Third and goal from the six. But Palter and Miller in the eye behind Crouch. Option Crouch, pitch Buck Palter, and it's strung out as well as you can. Napoleon Harris had the bead on Buck Palter. There are two things there. Good job of Harris stringing that out. He might have grabbed a face mask, in fact. Boy, wouldn't that be just pouring salt in the wound? It certainly oh, is. Oh, man. One of the few mistakes Crouch has made running the ball. I think he should have kept that one and turned it up. He had he a had, hole. Yeah, he had the touch. Yep. But how, how about this? You make a play, you string it out, and you still get nailed for the penalty. Personal foul, face mask, defense, half the distance to the goal, first down. Coach Walker, there'll be happier days, I can tell you. Doesn't feel that way right now because everything that can happen is. You heard of O'Boyle's postulate to Murphy's Law? He was an optimist. It says that Murphy was an optimist, yes. How'd you know that? Because <laughs> I told you. Hey, last everybody's year. had those days where you're going with Bill Boyle on the field. Who are you guys talking about? Just watch the game, Mike. Move it to the two. First and good. And Crouch faking to Miller. Everybody goes with Miller. Crouch carries for the touchdown, and it's 51 17. <laughs> boy, oh boy. A couple of real happy oh. friends of mine are Bob and Kathy McPherson, who retired from Nebraska, live in our community in North Carolina, and hang the big red sign out with the white in every fall. They celebrate somewhere. Josh Brown continues his PAT streak. Now 106 in a row and counting. Well, again, Crouch gets the touchdown, but he doesn't even get touched. Watch. 77, pulling around 335 pounder. He can't find anybody. <laughs> Nobody even to hit him. Nobody, Nobody even to hit the guy. He's a 340 pounder wanting to pull and hit somebody. He can't hit. Nice little flick of the wrist by Crouch there. He got a little basketball in his future, but uh, it's it's almost too easy right now, guys. We talked about it all night. They're not even getting hit. You got the big lineman pulling and not even having to block anybody. He didn't even have his mouthpiece in. <laughs> I'll guarantee you, if I were down there playing against Nebraska, I'd have my mouthpiece. He's getting more really. credentials for crowd. <laughs> Check it out, Michelle. <laughs> I mean, what are they doing now? Yeah, what are they using now? A little duct tape and chicken wire? I kind of wonder how much longer you're going to see Eric yeah, Crouch exactly. at this point. Yeah. Got his 100 yards. He's got his team up 52 17. 3.52 to go third quarter. Found another level of intensity here in the third quarter. Teddy Johnson picks his way for a return of nine. Finally get a bad kickoff and you end up on your eight-yard line because the thing, you can't hit it up. And you know what's amazing? In a game like this, it seemingly is a blowout at this point, whether it remains that way for the rest of the, of the game. And people watching home may say, oh, it's a blowout. I don't want to watch it anymore. But you know what? You don't want to turn it off. This, this, because this is a running team, Nebraska, that's what they're going to keep doing. It's not like a passing team just running in three times to not run up the score. They're going to continue to do what they do, and that's run the ball and do it impressively. Damian Anderson, maybe two. It's almost like watching a no-hitter, and it may be 11 to nothing, but you're watching such artistry. You're exactly. not going to turn that off. That's exactly right, Dave. Anderson on the carry for the Wildcats. Well, you guys are doing a great job of struggling to convince everybody <laughs> to stay with us. Y'all, please oh, stay with us. Oh, did you figure that out? Let me just tell the truth. Please stay with us. <laughs> we talk again under fire. Perfectly thrown past to Simmons. At the 25 and out. Michelle to four. Dave Barnett, Frank Solvich <laughs> really works his team hard for this bowl game. He, Eric Trout told me they had about 20 practices. He wanted his team in peak condition. Over 50% of those practices were in full pads. 80% were in some form of pads. And they had to run two gassers after every practice. Over the shoulder catch by Teddy Johnson. 
Juan Gross throws a shoe as Kustak throws 33 yards to Johnson. And you don't gain 475 yards a game, third in the nation on offense, without having a lot of excellence. And Northwestern is not going to give up. This team is well conditioned, and they will fight to the end of this game. Nice throw and kick. Into the three minute mark to snap it from the 41. Anderson to the short side of the field. They'll mark him out at the 37. And it, you know, this obviously is uh, is far from what they had in mind for their reward for a Big Ten co-championship. Keep in perspective what they've done in the matter of a year. Randy Walker's first year, they're three and eight. He completely revamps the offense after studying the St. Louis Rams and Clemson. And it's a little Marks, it's a little Rich Rodriguez. And in one year from 103rd in total offense to third. And tonight's well-connected storyline sponsored by Morgan Stanley Dean Witter is not a pretty storyline for Randy Walker. Nebraska with a 38-17 first half lead, 38 at the half for Nebraska. A uh, school record 31 in the second quarter. Eight big plays, average field position is a joke. They've had such a short distance to travel. Could the feeling if they started on their own one every every possession, it wouldn't affect the score one bit. Johnson makes the catch. Forward progress at the 27, and the march continues for Northwestern. Well, Northwestern put together a nice little drive here. Again, Nebraska shuttling players in and out on defense, but still, they don't want to give up any more points than 17 right now themselves. Kustak does well to get back to the line of scrimmage on the fumble snapback. Going back to what Michelle said, Bill, you, you coached teams before bowl games. She said Nebraska about 20 practices. Is that, that the norm, or you go less than that? The norm is 14 to 16 practices, even with a long time to prepare. And, Coach Solich was really disappointed with this season, as was the team, and they just went out and got after it. And you can see the results. Houston hangs a jump ball up for Johnson. He can't come down with it this time. Gross again with him, and Johnson writhing in pain in that end zone. Not a soft landing. Now, good coverage by Gross, though. The, the, the Nebraska plays a lot of man coverage. Craver at the one corner, Gross at the other. They've had good coverage tonight. Sees right on him the whole way. They're just jockeying for position at the end. You'll see arm on arm, and the both try and get the ball at its highest point. Can't really see what happens. Ooh, nice throw. And he got that thing down the chimney, and Johnson's got a chance to make the catch. Craver rolled over on his ankle inadvertently. And as you say, there's not a soft place to land on that artificial turf. So Gross with uh, just enough contact to roll that ankle of Johnson, and he's helped off. Well, maybe for the last time in his Northwestern career, senior Elgin, Illinois, really put it together his senior year. Injuries his first three years. He got his 40 time down. They had a tremendous offseason of getting guys in shape. The big guys getting stronger, the fast guys getting faster. And he dropped it 4 7 to 4 5 5. In a matter of months. And he made for a very nice senior year for Teddy Johnson. Hopefully it's not over yet. Swing pass, Anderson. Running away from Booker, but at the 25, he can't get away from Jamie Burrow. And, you know, just because this may be Teddy Johnson's last game, I want to. Give him his due a little. He had six touchdown receptions this year. They averaged 37 yards per reception. So, as you say, Dave, really turned it around and, and was very, very productive this year. Got to say, too, Craig Bowl, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska, had a marvelous plan. They're ready for everything Northwestern's doing. They've got an extra tackle every day. Fourth and ten. You start trying to get the signal in from the bench. In the play clock at four. And fires for the first down marker. And the catch is made, but not enough for the first for John Schweiger. He ran his pattern a yard short. 
And the whole point is get yeah. past the mark. That, that, that's an absolute mistake. The receiver didn't run the, the route long enough. The quarterback didn't throw the ball far enough. But the receiver, fourth and ten, you've got to be past the sticks. Just in case you have to come back, you run at 11 if you need 10. And if you have to come back, then you're still at the sticks. There's no excuse for cutting off an out route when you need 10 yards at 9 yards. However, you will be delighted to know, Michael, that they doubled Vanderbosch. <laughs> they, <did. laughs> they got a back over there, and he stood next to the tackle, and he helped block Vandenbosch. He did not get to the quarterback. Now slipped it to Judd Davies, the backup fullback. Redshirt freshman out of Omaha. There is for 13 yards in his limited duty. Backing up Willie Miller, he averaged better than 10 yards per carry. And uh, injured player for the Wildcats, and it's Rashad Morton, the senior safety. And that's what you get here. Like you said, limited duty, what, 18 carries on the year and averaging over 10 yards per carry? That's why they're the number one in the nation in rushing yards and rushing average per, per run at 6.3 per attempt. A lot of universities now, football programs, have excellent strength and conditioning operations in the offseason but it began with Nebraska on a production line basis it was done years and years ago and that's how they began to establish dominance stronger faster bigger than the opposition and that's what you're seeing here tonight and you know it's been a production line for Nebraska has been offensive lineman one of the made the uh, considered maybe the greatest center ever to play in the game Dave Remington uh, has come out of Nebraska. Their offensive line coach, Milt uh, Tenniper, 26 years, had 20 first-team All-Americans on the offensive line. These guys are just hogs, Bill. They are big, they are quick, and they are mean. Yeah, and they know exactly what they're doing. I asked Tony Davis once. Tom Osborne was kind enough to allow our staff to come out there when we coached at Alabama and visit with them. And Tony Davis was a graduate assistant, a former fullback. I said, why do you guys get in the top 10 every year? He said, because we run the same plays that we ran 20 years ago. Look and at that. Do. Rashad Morton, who runs off and holding either the elbow or the shoulder in great pain. And they will uh, quickly get him to table and check on him. Bing toss. This is going to be Newcomb going deep, and Davidson is 10 yards beyond everybody. A nice farewell for the senior Matt Davison out of Tecumseh, Nebraska. 69 yards on the flea flicker from the former quarterback Bobby Newcomb. Uh, let, let me just get this out. I don't really like that play. I, I don't really know why you run that one when it's 52 to 17. That, it's that, senior night. Yeah. That's all yeah. You can I, I mean, is there another way you could, you know, have him run the ball somehow, some way? I mean, I, I don't, uh, I don't agree with that one. Maybe the last of the seniors. Bobby Newcomb's fourth touchdown pass of his career. And it's 59 to 17. Insulted injury. Well, like everything else they've done tonight, it's executed to perfection. Absolute perfection. Again, the pass is backward, so Newcomb is allowed to throw the ball. Wide open. Nobody near him. Bill, you're on the other sideline. What are you thinking about that call? I'll tell you right now, Frank Solich was probably talked into that by somebody on his staff, and right now he's thinking, most likely, I, I, I really kind of wish we hadn't done that. Are you steaming if I, you're Randy Walker? Well, you're not so much steaming because the game lasts 60 minutes, and you shouldn't ask for any quarter. Right. Now, that I understand. But there I mean, is yeah, an yeah. unwritten code of honor that you don't run it up on people, and um, Nebraska... If they ran it down your throat and just keep it knocking it in the end zone, there's not much you can say about that. But to run a flea flicker at 52-17, I think Frank will regret it. Well, the ninth biggest uh, big play, one of the biggest tonight, 69 yards, three of those for touchdowns, including this Newcomb to Davison. Touchdown bomb, 59-17. Jason Wright, new kick returner back there. And just across the 20. You know, and you saw that stat we just had up there, nine plays of 20 plus. On the year, they had 53 plays of 25 yards or more. And 29 of those came on runs. I mean, it's, 
dominating stat after dominating stat with this team. Well, it's a dominating program. They do a wonderful job in the classroom. They got 13 guys out there on the field tonight that already have their diplomas. Right. Either earned them in short order or were redshirt. And certainly to the credit of Northwestern, you don't have to question their academic standards at all. Northwestern's number one in the country in graduating student athletes and number two on the football team, second only to Duke University. So they're a wonderful academic setup for both these programs. Amy and Anderson carry it, it, it was hard to find anybody who didn't have at least a three-point GPA on yeah. either team. Well, there was some of them, some of the defensive line. Oh. <laughs> that Kustak rolls and fires low and incomplete. I'll tell you seriously, what I was impressed with was the variety of majors. You had math majors, biology majors, uh, finance, uh, the farm agribusiness major that you can get at Nebraska communications uh, and of course at Northwestern there's a, also a wide range of science business liberal arts I was just impressed in it for both these teams of how nice the players were off the field and how on the field you're seeing you know some some pretty some pretty rough play out there they're able to flip that switch on and off which is exactly what you should do as a football player and boss is calm cool guy off the field oh, oh, oh. Slipped behind Kustak for a sack. Kustak finds somebody all alone and stumbling out of bounds after making the grab is Roddy Foster. With 19 seconds to go in the quarter, that's 34 yards. About well, one of the few times Kustak was able to escape Mr. Vandenbosch and he turned it into a big play. You think he's got his radar screen directed over there on that left side? That smell that coming, he just stepped up and uh, wisely escaped it and made a nice throw. Reverse. Oh. Not a surprise. Nobody's fooled at all. Well, actually, Patrick. Yeah, what happened is Kelsey fell down, got up and was right in the path of the reverse guy. The defensive end, Chris Kelsey, 57, got through the gap so clean he was surprised. He slipped and fell and got up and the ball was coming right at him. We're three quarters, and the highlight film of this one is a script by Edgar Allan Poe, directed by Wes Craven. If you're a Northwestern Wildcat fan, <laughs> Nebraska, with a cast including Crouch, Alexander, Buck Holder, anybody throwing out there. Alamo Dome, Dave Barnett, Mike Golick, Bill Curry, and Michelle Tafoya, and number eight, Nebraska, can name its margin at this point. For number 19, Northwestern, 60,028 on hand in the Dome tonight, and the fourth quarter starts with the Wildcats, the 47-yard line of the Huskers on a second and 12. Boss Anderson quickly knocked out after a very short pickup by Booker. Through three quarters, 545 total yards, 385 rushing yards. For the number one rushing team in the country, Nebraska. 354 total for the Wildcats, the number three offensive team in the country. And that incomplete intended for Ronnie Foster. Certainly this Nebraska defense again switching in reserves some starters staying in to see Craver there still in the game playing at corner these guys obviously don't want any more than 17 points put on the board by Northwestern so while an offense can back off somewhat to not put up any more points the defense certainly is still trying to hammer the offense fourth and eight they need to get to the 35 Kustak's pass is batted away by Keo Craver, the junior from Harleton, Texas. One of the continued strong recruiting pipeline down here to the state of Texas and Nebraska. Loves playing here in San Antonio. This is their third trip here, and they have three blowout victories. Two in the Big 12 championships. One over Texas last year. Three years ago here against Texas A&M, and they're three for three for the Dome. Craver point, another nice play. Jumping to make that block. He's a uh, triple jump in you know, track, so he certainly can get up in the air. I watched the Michigan tape today, and they got behind Michigan, came back, scored 54, won the game. 
they, they haven't seen speed in the secondary the way they've seen from this Nebraska team. Crouch still the quarterback. Davies on the carry. Down below to Michelle. Well, you guys saw Rashad Morton get injured in a great, great deal of pain. The official word on that neck injury is a stinger. It's hard to believe it's simply a stinger with the amount of pain he is in. His father came out of the stands, and they are carting him back to the locker room. One more injury for Northwestern. Teddy Johnson has a left ankle sprain. They initially thought he was done for the day, but they taped him up. He may try it again, but Morton is done. Alexander still in there fighting to get to 200 yards. That might do it for him right there. Both of you guys ever have stingers? Oh, Is there any yes. way to describe what he feels? Bill, like? I was just going to say the pain and the stinger and the numbness that goes down to your fingertips and how your, your arm just absolutely dies. And it, the, the, it, the pain is excruciating for a while. It is indescribable. And it, to say just a stinger, what it is is a pinched nerve in your spinal column, and it's sciatic pain, which is the worst pain that the human body can express. Alexander with a school record now for rushing yards in a bowl. The old mark was 206. Come on, Green, the 98 Orange Bowl against Tennessee. Give him 37 more, that gets him to 237 yards, so another record shatter. Raiola has the reputation of being a center that can play like a fullback. Watch that pull and hit beautiful. Pull around the guard, cut the middle linebacker down on the ground. Alexander off to his record. Starting to see that more with the, with the better centers around college in the NFL that they're able to pull and, and, and get out there in space. Pretty much anywhere Dan Alexander's run tonight has been in space. Yeah, there's been plenty of space. But back to the center thing. Center, centers have pulled for a long time, but the difference in Riola is he's so much bigger. To be so agile, I mean, some little bitty guys like me could pull and lead and things. It's not a big deal. This guy pulls and leads. He's like a truck. He's like a tackle. But he runs like a fullback. And that's what that's how his coaches describe it. He's a fullback type athlete, but playing in the middle of the line. And it's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Don. He's 22. Got a nice gift. 337, also a career high for Alexander. Stuff for no gain. Real rarity tonight. Well, Dominic Raiola, the All-America Center, leading the Nebraska offensive line, and they pointed toward tonight to show the country exactly what they're capable of. I'm showing people that we can move. We're not, you know, just slobs that just run right at you. I mean, we're going to move, and, you know, I think I really believe that we're the most agile line, you know, to come through this program, and I think that's a bold statement, but I, re I really believe that. That looks so bold. It just looks like he's stating pure fact tonight. Agile, mobile, and hostile. Bad pitch. Crouch runs it down. Looks to make something out of it. And he'll lose back to the 28. It's a great quote from Coach Jake Gaither of Florida A&M, one of the all-time great football coaches. He said he wanted his people to be agile, mobile, and hostile. Well, this punch right here would fit the bill. Boy, they would. And you see, if you saw the ball go on the ground, that was a huge problem for Nebraska last year, where they fumbled it 49 times and lost 29. This year, they really cut it down. They fumbled it 25 times and lost just nine. There again, a fumble, but they did retain possession. Well, they overcame almost all those fumbles last year, except they only lost to Texas. 45 yarder, no good. Josh Brown with a miss. Earlier today, got his career high kick, though, and it stays 59 17. Still here and enjoying a 59 17 lead. Sports Center is next, but we have a new quarterback for Northwestern, Matt Danielson, redshirt freshman, Rochester Hills, Michigan, the son of our colleague Gary Danielson of ABC and the former Detroit Lions quarterback. So Matt taking over for Zach Kustak who finishes 15 to 35, 138 yards through the air and one touchdown. Well, Gary's got, got to be more concerned for his son knowing this defense still wants to do some hitting out there to see his son take some shots. Six foot, 222 pounds. That's hit before. Oh, guess who? 
and gets near his target. That would be number 83, I think. That'd be Kyle Vandenbosch making another play. I was just about to say, to heck with the fact that the defense wants to stop him. Vandenbosch is still on the field. That's what would bother me. And the way a quarterback gets hurt the most quickly with his arm is for somebody to grab his hand when he's about to follow through. The shoulder comes out of joint. So Danielson was lucky he was not injured there. Played in seven games during the regular season. That throw should have been caught, and it wasn't. I tell you, though, those defensive backs, Joe Walker, Craver, Gross, Watchorn, they are on the money. They are so tight in their coverage. They have been another big difference in this game, along with the people up front. Yeah, the, the, the D-line and the D-backs, you're right. Vanden Boss and the D-backs and their man coverage have been uh, fantastic. I really didn't think they could shut them down like they had. I really didn't. Jason Wright could have run a long way if he had hung on. Standring has not had a good night. Although he gets a bounce here, it's off Walker and loose and covered by Joe at the 30. 10.36 to go in the eighth annual Alamo Bowl. All red and white. The Huskers leading the Wildcats 59-17. And I spoke with Dan Alexander earlier this week. He said he didn't really come from a football-oriented family, so he didn't understand the impact that the Nebraska football team had in the community. It wasn't until his recruiting trip that he got the idea. On that trip, the team went on a hospital visit. He saw patients in pretty bad shape simply light up at the sight of the players. He said that impressed him. He knew he could come to Nebraska and have an impact on people he had a tremendous impact on this game, Dave. Impact on several of the Wildcats, and now finally some backup Cornhuskers are filtering onto the field. New quarterback Jamal Lord, redshirt freshman, Bayonne, New Jersey. He played six games with those numbers during Derek. the regular season, and Derek, Derek Diedrich took that uh, handoff. Sophomore from Scarborough, Ontario, the first Canadian scholarship uh, Cornhusker ever. Yeah, I got a suggestion. Dan Alexander, who is a nice young man, needs to visit all the Northwestern players that are going to be in the hospital that he put there. <laughs> With totally clean hits. Diedrich. Wrestled down by Conrad Emmerich. Alexander's numbers tonight, 241, shattering the bull mark. It's also, and think of the history of year in, year out running talent they've had. This is the eighth best single game performance in Nebraska history. 1,400 yard games in his career. That total sickness in school history. We talk about strength and running ability and strength as a freshman. He won the weightlifting award here at Nebraska and that's a huge thing because it's a big, big weightlifting team. Helps him run over those defenses. The only program that's done more to popularize weightlifting than no. Nebraska? No. No. They have set the pace and they have they've set the standard. They've been kind enough to share ideas with the rest of us in this business. And um, it's like anything else. It's not so much that you have the idea. It's how well you execute it that makes it work. And that's what Nebraska has done over and over and over. Dan Alexander being a, a, a model in so many ways of, of uh, what you ought to be as a college athlete. He reminds me, frankly, of Bo Jackson. I, I had the privilege or the <laughs> dubious distinction of coaching against Bo. And if you're the coach, you stand up. You're not worried about whether he's going to make yards. You wonder about whether your players are going to get up. <laughs> Timeout before just the third punt required of Dan Hayden felt all night. In the Sylvania Alamo Bowl, Nebraska and bringing them out in force. As usual, selling Royal Outlet and then some in Northwestern as well with a much smaller fan contingent and enrollment very well represented themselves in just their fourth bowl appearance in history. Eric Thompson on the return, and they'll start at the 33. Well, Northwestern fans can take heart in the fact that obviously this game is not turning out the way they want it to, but only nine players from the current roster of 86 are gone. Five, just five starters. They have Kustak coming back. Damian Anderson coming back. Their leading receiver, Sam Simmons, is coming back. The whole offensive line will have another year to gel together. So they do have a lot coming back for next year. We were comparing this to the 62-24 strap. Uh, they laid to Florida. And Fiesta capping their 95 national championship. You know, Florida rebounded okay. 
from that game. Yep. They were the national champions the next year. Not, not saying that's necessarily uh, in Northwestern's future, but it's not fatal. Capital One Bowl Week continues. The Outback Bowl, New Year's Day, 11 a.m. Eastern to Tampa, South Carolina. Here's offering here on ESPN from Tampa. Danielson fires a fastball. It's deflected and intercepted. It was off Thunle Patrick, and Joe Walker gets the pick for Nebraska. And I thought Nebraska was going to be called for offsides. There was a stun on the line, but the lineman moved sideways more than forward. I thought the Nebra uh, Northwestern had a free play there, but they didn't. He Turn. was offsides. They should have called it, but they just didn't get it. He did not get back. You didn't think he got back? No, I know he, he was back. starting to go on an angle. I didn't know if he got into the neutral zone. That's too bad for young Danielson. He's got a nice arm, nice delivery, and the ball was just tipped up in the air and picked off. So Jamal Lord back to work. And Darren Diedrich, the third eye back, behind Alexander and Buck Halter making the most of his chance to shine 16 yards they're over 400 rushing yards now 435 and counting where are they all coming from all these runners well this guy came from Ontario he's a Canadian player or was a Canadian player what happens when Nebraska has a game like this they win 104 straight when they rush for 300 or more. 182 and five is the all-time record since 73 anyway. Since they have put together this streak of 300 plus rush yard performances. You know, we talked earlier about how recruiting has changed with the limits and it's benefited Northwestern. But has the trend offensively benefited Frank Solich? Because they used to battle Oklahoma, Texas running teams for the same type program, and there, there aren't as many out there that are trying to do it the way Nebraska is. Oh, I think you've hit on something real special. Yep. There. That offensive player going to OU now is looking forward to a passing game. That's right. They're going to get the great skill athletes, and Nebraska will get their share of those as well. But the the top backs want to go somewhere they they get a chance to That's carry it. the ball the way Alexander has tonight Dave, yeah, and these yeah. other guys. Dave, that that is a great point. Uh, and Texas has gone really to, to a more balanced attack with the two quarterbacks and and throwing a little more. So that uh, really is a great point that the, the the big time runners and the the hog linemen are going to want to want to gravitate toward this system right here in Nebraska and the option quarterback. Yeah, exactly. programs dabble in it. We've talked during the year about how sometimes that can be a dangerous thing, but when you specialize in it, you can get a crouch and you can get a talent like Jamal Lord behind him. Ray Bogenreath makes the tackle on Lord. So add it up, and this incredible string for Nebraska is now 32 straight nine win seasons. This will be 10 and 2. 32nd straight bowl invite 342 consecutive weeks they've been ranked by the Associated Press 39 straight winning seasons three more and they will match the early early Notre Dame program. I wasn't on those teams in Notre Dame. Hey. They, they influenced your decision yes, to go. Yes they did. Yeah. <laughs> you beat me to the punch. Lord lasted at the 10 by Harris. However, Paul Horning played on several of those teams, my old buddy from the Packers. I certainly don't think Nebraska will have any trouble getting three more winning seasons uh, and to creep up on Notre Dame. Though Notre, I'm sure Notre Dame will put together a few more winning seasons. Himself. You reckon? You reckon? Yeah. And those of you tuning in for Sports Center, it is coming up as soon as we complete the Sylvania Alamo Bowl. Diedrich breaks tackles into the corner of the end zone and Nebraska cracks 60. Now back to this thing about running up the score. There's nothing you can do right. when you put your third stringers in and they march down the field and score. Coach Walker's got a lot of his backups on the field. Get them a chance to play a little bit on both sides of the ball. Nobody's going to dispute that. But when you throw those flea flickers at, at 52 to 17, then somebody might have a little something. I agree. Said. There's absolutely nothing with just playing that smash mouth football, just running it. And you're going to make yards. You're going to make yards. The defense has to make some play. 
Brown makes it 66-17, a new school record. They continue to fall. This is the most points they've ever scored in a bowl game. Previous high, that's 62. This is 96. Fiesta. Everybody into the act, sharing the fun and the glory for the Huskers tonight. Chips began in 94. Tom Osborne's first title, 13-0 over Miami, 24-17 in the Orange. 95, arguably his best, 12-0. And national title number two and a 97 as he closed his career. Another perfect season, and they split the championship that year with Michigan, which won the writer's poll, and Osborne's final team won the coaches' poll. 42-17, they knocked off Tennessee in the orange, and that is the legacy inherited by Frank Solich, who was 12 and one himself last year. He's gone for a regular season loss to Texas. He might have had his first or at least a crack at his first national championship. So you look at the start that Solich has put on the board in his first three years. Walter Camp 41 wins in three years. They played a lot of games back oh, well, <laughs> at Yale so. and then Switzer had the incredible start. A couple of unbeaten seasons and with this, Frank Solich will improve to 31 and 7. And into the bench coming in now, Kevin Lawrence on the carry of the of the jobs inherited following legends. You know a little bit about that. You weren't right after Bear Bryant at Alabama, but he is right after a legend. And you know, the national championship hasn't happened for him, but it didn't happen for a long time for Osborne either. And really, it's hard to see any difference with that exception. Anderson's throw incomplete. The rap on Tom for years was that he couldn't win the big one. And, and I mean, a lot of years. And they would have great Daniel's seasons. And they'd be a, a 10 and 1 or 11 and 1 or whatever and, and not win the bowl. He broke even in bowl games, maybe a little below breaking even. And then he had problems with Oklahoma. And I mean, it was constant misery until right down the stretch at the end. Then he got those three national titles. And that's what stuck to follow. But I asked Frank, do you speak to your local congressman? He said, well, as a matter of fact, we do. And Tom is very supportive. He said he comes around when we want him and need him. He's very careful not to insert himself where he shouldn't. And, of course, that's the kind of man Tom Osborne is anyhow. So the whole program is a remarkable program and Frank Solich is doing a fine job of following up. There are very few programs that if you do not finish in the top three in the country you are disappointed and Nebraska is one of those programs. It's one of them. And they will probably finish at around five or maybe in the top five and they will be disappointed at this season knowing that they they, they, they had the opportunities they said hey we were number one we had our shot there and we didn't hold it. Everybody remembers Oklahoma and that route the the one that really has to stick with him that kept him out of the Big 12 championship game and a chance to avenge that loss to OU, the one-point loss at Kansas State. 29-28. And the defense keeps pouring it on. The catch by Jason Wright. Short of the first. The marker down. 409 remaining. Flag on the play. Personal foul, Northwestern. And let's go down below to Michelle. Dave, speaking of personal fouls, Carlos Polk talked a little trash before this game about Northwestern. He's from Illinois. He said he never really liked the school. Well, a second ago, he sought me out on the sideline. He pointed up at the scoreboard and he said, I told you all this would happen. I hope you had a lot of jokes to tell tonight. They're still basking in this glory down here, guys. Oh, you never have enough jokes for... <laughs> for 66 17. Look at him just walking away. He couldn't say hi to anybody. And, and congrats to he and Kyle Vandenbosch, both those guys getting married next spring. Starting into the, the real world there, huh, Bill? The real world. You're exactly <laughs> right. You're exactly right, Michael. And mutual bliss for 38 years to the curve. Stan brings punt. Field it on the fly. And again, Nebraska with an embarrassment of riches as far as where they have started uh, their average possession. That return by Terrell Butler. 
you know, go, going back to you were talking about Oklahoma and, and talking to the, the, the players, they, they a lot of the defenders for Nebraska, they said if they had hindsight it was 2020, they would have they felt they would have played Oklahoma a little different. They said we were just playing our game, playing aggressive, and they saw what Texas Tech did, lost, but held Oklahoma to his lowest point total of the year by just rushing three, playing back, making Josh Heifel throw, and Nebraska didn't go that route on defense. They said they would probably do it different, or they would like to do it different if they had the shot again. Third quarterback of the night, sophomore Joe Chrisman out of Longmont, Colorado, will finish things up. Well, both coaches will use this as a teaching instrument. Frank Solich will teach his men what it takes to finish the job and be all that a Nebraska program should be. Randy Walker will say, now, men, you understand where we need to go in terms of quickness, speed, and power. We saw it in Nebraska. This is what we want to be physically. The on-take Brixby carried for four. And Thunder Collins. Great name, and they hope a great future. <laughs> ABC Sports will have the FedEx Orange Bowl for the BCS Championship Wednesday, January 3rd at 8 Eastern from Miami, Oklahoma, Florida State. Oklahoma and Josh Heifel against Florida State and Chris Wenke. Oklahoma's last national championship was the 1985 team toward the end of the run for Barry Switzer. Florida State looking to repeat. And you know Florida State paid a lot of attention to those last three teams to play Oklahoma. Took a lot of notes because the, the blitz hypel into oblivion train of thought that Nebraska tried to follow uh, was simply proven inoperable. And, and Nebraska said, you know, we saw that Texas had trouble blitzing all out. Kansas State had trouble blitzing. But we thought... We're better at blitzing, and therefore, why not go with what we right. think we do best? Right. And it still didn't. Work. Yeah, well, that, and, and uh, exactly right. They they said this is the way we do it. We're going to do it, and they didn't adjust. They they didn't feel they adjusted to maybe how they should have. But again, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Well, they played well in the second half. Yeah, defense, right. but it was too late. <laughs> second and eleven. Collins. Finally corralled at the 37. Yeah, I, I, I almost want to. I almost want to give. You remember the old commercial where, where uh, the guy puts his arm around the shoulder and then says, "Here, kid, have a lifesaver." I almost want to do that <laughs> to the Northwestern, but I feel bad for him. Maybe Randy Walker's going to hand out a bunch of lifesavers after the game. Well, I think what you have to remember is that they got in a bowl game, and it's a very good bowl game. They got up against a very angry, very talented opponent that taught them a lesson about football, and they'll learn from this. This is the fourth time in their history. Uh, the score will be forgettable, but not the trip. They've had the time of their lives in San Antonio. And talking to them earlier in the week, one of the questions that came up was, well, you know, forever Northwestern was the doormat, one of the worst programs in college football. And then Gary Barnett produced the back-to-back -back championships, 95-96. They fell back down to 3-8 and eight last year, and in one year, a co-championship with Michigan and Purdue under Walker in just his second year. So do they think they're now at a point where they can start churning out the bowls year in, year out, and stay at this level? And they're, they're convinced that that talent level is starting to, to show up in Evanston, and they have a system that can take great advantage of the talent. Collins on the carry. It's Collins on the fourth down carry. Our Capital One players of the game tonight in the Sylvania Alamo Bowl. Looking at the rather easy choice on the Nebraska side, and that's Dan Alexander with a career high in bowl record. 21 carries, 241 yards, two touchdowns, and Damian Anderson got his. 18 for 148 and a touchdown of 69 yards. Most of the time, however, he was bottled up and frustrated, but can't do it against a talent like Anderson forever. There's a nice adjustment. The catch is made by Ronnie Foster. Now they say he dropped it and never had control. You know, you're, you're right about Damian Anderson. Anderson. The stats look good as <laughs> Frank Solis gets his water shower. But it was a couple of big runs. You are, you're right. He, he was bottled up for the most part by that fantastic tonight anyway Nebraska defense we should do it we wish we could do it every week but uh, now that we're toward the end of our season we finally get a chance to thank everybody that works so hard with us and in the booth that's Kirk McCarley our statistician Dave Robinson my spotter Ken Trevor 
your spotter, Bill and Mike, our technical director, Ross Flagg, lead audio, Scott Prey, audio assist, Pat Cassidy, and Melissa Ward, our core camera crew, Wayne Crump, Ali Shu, John Sherrill, John Shupin, Ryan McIntyre, our lead tape operator, Gene Kelly, our EVS operator, David Gray, our engineer in charge, Marty Kipp, our maintenance professional, Scott Rose, our operations manager, Lynn West and our director Bruce Troit, tape producer Mike Molinari, associate producer Jamie Berg, associate director John Wilson, MIS Stats, Joe Durant, and Shane Taylor, first and ten operators Rich Jardin, Tim Keeley, Mike Sammartino. He's too modest to include himself on the list, but our producer Tom Hardy. <laughs> I think you really just forgot to put his name down. Wonderful, wonderful group of people. That's a lot of people to make us look good, Gary. I'm telling you, I've, <laughs> I've worked with a lot of groups and none better than this, and I really mean that. And Mike, uh, Bill and I have been together for now four years, and adding you and Michelle to the scene, and the three of us have taken a vote. Right now, it's two and one in favor of bringing you back next year. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Who voted for it? Lots of <laughs> lots of fun around you this year. Jeff Shuey as well uh, should be in that list uh, on our audio RF technicians. Red Butler with that return and the traditional bath times two wow for Frank so well, 66 points you get a couple of them huh 19 19 Mike I voted to bring you back I just want you to know that I'm one of the ones that voted to bring you back <laughs> I don't know what I would do without I, you I heard big man I don't know what my foil would be for defensive line example as well as you do that it's I heard just marvelous. Uh, I heard Michelle Tafoya voted you out and Michelle's the only vote that counts <laughs> Final play of an amazing statement by an amazing program. Nebraska, 10 and 2 in the 2000 season. They are the 2000 Sylvania Alamo Bowl champion. Oh, yeah. They've taken six of their last seven in the postseason, and this one won for the books their highest scoring bowl ever, 66 to 17. They defeat Randy Walker's. Big Ten co-champions, Northwestern, they finish at 8 and 4. So again, our final Nebraska roll, 66-17. Coming up next, Sports Center from Michelle Tafoya, Bill Curry, and Mike Golick. Dave Barnett saying so long from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Your home for college football on the internet. Sports Center is next.